Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Tone Talk with Mark Uzanski and Dave Friedman. Uh, it's episode 120. Oh, shit. Hmm. Is that me? I don't know. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of high tech, yeah, here we go. Speaking of high tech, there you go. Did you have it going somewhere else? I think I did. Whoops. I didn't imagine that I did that. Oh, that way right, they well, know it's live. This is yeah. live. Well, this is I, live. They, they heard them saying, oh, shit, like three times. So. <laughs> it was real, man. Yeah. So, no matter uh, how many times we do this, we can't get it right. It's all right, man. Well, <laughs> showbiz, no many, folks. And no matter how many times I try, like, I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I think I'm prepared. You know, like, I'm like, I got it all down. I got notes. You know, it doesn't matter. Right, these have this. Anyway, so episode 123. <laughs> One, and two, uh we've got robert keely and andy timmons and uh i've been excited about this episode for a while how are you guys good man good to have you good to good to be with you i should say mark and david good to be with you yeah, yeah. thanks for having us good sure. to be with you well, guys too this is fun absolutely. absolutely yeah you did it before and that was yeah. that was that was that was a pre-bionic man that's right <laughs> <laughs> the new and improved the new and modded improved he's a, it's a modded robert keely <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> I definitely was true bypass. Was there you go. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. You awesome. said we're having you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, I hope everybody in the audience is doing good and uh, enjoying whatever you're drinking of choice for Friday. Yeah. Um, uh, Andy is all set up with his with his rig and the yeah the, fantastic. those those are that know me from my my live streams will recognize where i'm at this is the studio up, upstairs in my house where i did a bunch of um live stream broadcast during the pandemic i you know got crafty with doing uh, live stream shows from the house since we couldn't leave and so they're probably tired of seeing the blue lights and the same amps behind me for you know some like 150 shows or so but uh but anyway, yeah, I've got my uh, got my guitar plugged in in case we need to to sample anything or or not. Happy to chat. Oh, I, well, whatever, I whatever you guys want to do, mm -hmm. you know. I can't wait to dive into uh, talking about this this puppy. Hey, there it is. Wait, I have mine too. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> they're multiplying. <laughs> they're multiplying. Okay, Beautiful. I got uh, nice. I meant nice. to bring that over in the desk, and I'm like, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, uh, nice. Before we dive in, I just want to uh, mention our sponsors. We have Sweetwater, uh, so sweetwater.com. If you guys check out our link below, uh, you can. And I, and I do believe Sweetwater is a dealer for you, Robert, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That means That's you like can go out and buy this Halo at Sweetwater. <laughs> yep, I actually <laughs> provi I provided yeah. a link. Uh, oh, that's great. An affiliate link in our that's description awesome. below. So. If you guys click on the link, it goes right to the Keeley Halo pedal, uh, and you can purchase it. It helps out our channel, and then um, I know it helps out uh, Keeley and and Andy as well. So yeah, that's right. That's awesome. Dave, that's where I that's where I met you. You yeah. for the first time, I, you were with Grover Jackson. That was really cool. Yeah, I think we did a guitar presentation or something. Yeah, the same day, same day we had. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Or bubble yeah. run, I think it's so. fun going there. I don't know oh, about yeah. those presentations, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, okay, you're on yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's 7 a.m. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do your best. The first one is at 7 a.m. Yeah, exactly. Wow. I, remember you I, took first a I took a guitar player with me once, and, and he's like, Wait a minute, I gotta play at 7 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that one, I've done that one, before yeah, too. That's it's it's. <laughs> It's lots like, of uh, lots of coffee involved for sure. Bunch of, bunch of coffee and put yeah. on a smile and there you go. I'm gonna be oh. up there. I'm going up there in the. I, think, I forget the date. I should know my own dates. But sometime sometime in the middle of September, I've got a master class and then a, one of those recording wor workshops. So I think if you go to oh, sweetwater.com, cool. you can find out about how to attend that. Be nice. I love I love it. I love being up there. I've got an old friend up there named Don Carr that's kind of in charge of the whole. Oh yeah, oh, yeah I know Don. Yeah. Yep. So he and, he and I um, played in. Uh, rival bands back in the Midwest. He was in in, in uh, um, Henderson, Kentucky, and I was in Evansville, Indiana. But he had a band. Uh, I think it was called in, not Infinity, but what was it? Um, oh, good lord, I can't remember right now. But anyway, friends from high school and early college, and back back in the day. So I'm really proud of him. He's done very well. 
They like Don. Don's a cool guy. Sweet. Yeah, oh, yeah. definitely. Good player, too. Yeah. yeah, he is. Heck yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We've got uh, actually Sean Tubbs in the, the chat here. He says, so if hey. I buy that Halo, will I get all the stuff that Andy plays with it? Both my licks. You get both <laughs> the, the two, the two, whatever. <laughs> yeah. John, I think you got some licks of your own. Yeah, I think he's doing all right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's awesome. Um, so, yeah, just hey to everybody. Uh, my wife's in the chat. Well, hey, but Sean, you should buy that pedal. It's, <laughs> it, it's really great. Yes. Right. So, yes, I agree. I agree. Um, so how did so how did this the pedal come about? Like, I know it's been a long time in the making, I think, right? It was a bit in the making. So got how to actually talk about the actual origin. But really, it came down to me realizing that, you know, what I was wanting hadn't been you know, made yet. I'm just, I'm a long time echo, you know, fanatic back from even from when the Rockman came out with that echo. And then I was adding, that was my, that was actually my main rig when I was um, like late, late high school, early college was I had a Rockman into an AD202, one of those rack mount Ibanez multi-effect units that had delay on it into a, a Music Man 115. So it was echo into more echo <laughs> into the amp and I, I thought it, I mean, it did. It sounded pretty damn amazing, probably pretty processy. But um, from there, you know, just a variety of different tape echoes and memory man echoes, and then eventually the timeline, which I was using. But it was, you know, the timeline was great, but it was, it does so many things. I really just needed a smaller pedal that did the one sound I was going for. And, and mm -hmm. the timeline did a pretty good job of getting what I was normally getting with two memory man echoes in series together um, with that particular type of modulation and what those preamps would do to the tone. Mm -hmm. um, but I went to Daniel Steinhardt. He's a good buddy of mine, the guy that uh, builds the, the gig rig. The, mm -hmm. the, the, the G, that pedal the G, show. Yeah, that pedal show, right? And so uh, lovely guy, one of the smartest guys I know out there. And I just said, well, who should I go to, to that could help me make this pedal? And without flinching, he just said, Robert Keeley's the guy. And so that was it. It was at a NAMM show. He just walked me over to where Robert was at the NAMM show and introduced us. And we hit it off great. And... You know, as things go, it kind of takes a little while to get things started. But uh, so that maybe from three years from that date, we finally got it out there. But as as we were talking about earlier, Robert had some health problems. There was all kinds of things going on. You might have heard about that pandemic thing that happened. And, I heard about you know, that. The kids and their pandemics. Um, yeah. So it was just kind of. But once we really, in fact, I think I know, Robert, your your surgery was in March of 2020. We first got together in January of 2020. Yeah. Is that right? That was the first trip I came. So luckily, Robert and the company, they're in Oklahoma City, which is only about maybe three plus hours from McKinney, Texas, where I live in, in North Texas here. So every time we got to, to you know, to work together, we, we could just drive each other's places. You know, sometimes they would come to my studio. Sometimes I'd go up there. But from that from that time, it was maybe about a year and a half. When we first got in a room and listened to all these different units. And, you know, that, it's, that first time, that first time, Andy was. <laughs> Dave, I'm sure you can relate to this where, you know, you're, you're getting ready to audition some piece of equipment to somebody that you admire their sound and definitely their opinions and everything else. And you, you think you got it nailed, so you, you feel pretty confident. And then you listen to the, the artist play through their rig and you're like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have got a lot of work to do. <laughs> because yeah. that is a really complex type of nuance and i don't know that we have the chops to, to do that so the the very first time that we got together was like in february of 2020 february. and right before the pandemic got oh. all crazy yeah. and uh uh i remember thinking man uh that that's not going to be easy to get those those sounds that you had with the strymon how, how mm. long did you how long did you run the strymon again how many years it's i I really don't recall. Um, it was maybe four or five years. My, my cr yeah. chronology is horrible. Mm -hmm. But it literally was like, because I was using the two vintage uh, Memory Man echoes, I, in the studio I was also using the EP3 tape echoes. I really love that sound running through the th running into the front end of the Marshalls. Um, but the, the, the thing that I was getting with the Memory Man's, Memory Men, I never know what to say. <laughs> the, two, the two Memory Men's uh, together was really a special kind of sound. So I spent a long time with the timeline trying to replicate that. And I always said I got it like 92%. It was like 
but in a much more, you know, in a handier, you know, dependable unit. Those old vintage, you know, electroharmonics guys were always breaking down on me. And anyway, long story short, the time only worked great, but it was not quite exactly what I was looking for. You know, it, I, I, it was the best I could, that had at the time that was, that was kind of ish for me, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. it, it's not as simple as putting together the concept of a, a quarter note and a dotted eighth note. It wasn't, it was not that simple. The, the sounds that you had curated in that timeline, all your, you know, magic settings, right. um, those, those took a lot of work to unravel <laughs> and then get to the point where we were making music with it. It, it took, right. it literally took us years to, to, figure out this sound and figure right. out what was making it sound good <laughs> and then do more of that. Right. And then, sure. And then we were tracking down a variety of bizarre noises and it, yeah. just, it just plagued us behind the scenes, the, in, the entire years <laughs> of the right. thing. And, uh, uh, we didn't know for sure if it was, you know, maybe our layout of the circuit, you know, was that causing some sort of digital trash to get in there? Mm -hmm. And, or, or was it something that we were doing weird with our code? Maybe we don't know how to, you know, program this, this device, you know, maybe we're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so we had, we had, at one point in time, we had literally four different circuit boards of the exact same thing, just different layouts, different grounding principles. And, uh, uh, eventually we figured it out. It was a combination of things, you know, as, yeah. as with anything, it was a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but wow. It, it was, it was very challenging to, for my team to, to develop all those, the nuances that you had picked out in the memory men and the, right. and the timeline, you know, those, right. that was a lot to kind of craft together. Well, the key, the key and what I'm so thankful for Robert between you and Aaron, and of course, everybody else at the, at the, at the company was that we, that we could be in the room together for all the, for the, the main audio tweaks and at least for the auditioning, instead of trying to send a unit back and forth and talk about it over the phone to be in the room and experience yeah. those different nuances. And once something else got changed, it might've compromised something else in that, that process that you go through, but to be in the room and recognize the sound when you hear it. And then when we got it to the point where we knew we had improved upon, you know, what I had been using, Mm -hmm. that was that was really special it, it was it was it was everybody's arm was fully erect hair yeah. you know it was like exactly. look at that look at that <laughs> and it was it was so exciting because it was from sounds that we were making and yeah it was like, exactly yeah. but wow you, you, I just don't I don't get there very so but then all all, all the other stuff that you what know? you guys went through you know was after you would leave and you'd have to go back and figure out, well, how do we do this? I mean, yeah. so I didn't, you know, I wasn't participate participatory in any of that, that struggle or whatever was gone through, but just happy we got there and thank you for that. But, yeah. but just really wanting to get it right. You know, you wanted to take the time and we're happy to spend that time. It wasn't about just cranking something out to get a product out by, by a deadline. You guys really cared a lot about, Oh, hey man, man. <laughs> who that is? What a oh, what a man. what a hero shows up, man! Hey, Mr. Pete, what's, what's going on, here? man? Hello, we, sir. We just got Pete blocked. <laughs> yeah, we got Dave. And Mr. I'm talking here. I'm sorry, you're right in the middle of the story, and I just walked into Dave's shop. And Dude, I, that's the best. Oh, that's the best. Oh, How you doing, buddy? Good. How are you guys? We're good. We're good. Just doing good. Talking about Echo, believe it or not. <clears throat> Dude, you got your whole like streaming setup going, which is. I mean, what, where else am I gonna yeah, go? He can play guitar. Look, <laughs> <laughs> I could have gone oh, from the that. kitchen, you know. I'm not sure why Venus by the Shocking Blues is the first lick I always play with. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great song. Sounds great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Best solo. Uh, it's over the minor. <laughs> Let's not bicker and argue over major and minor thirds. It's a happy occasion, you know. Yeah, what's a half step between? What's friends? a half step? It's all blues, man. <laughs> you know, she she, <laughs> she sang that entire song phonetically. She was Dutch and didn't speak any English. So when you listen to it, it's wow. like you could tell oh, that's that's not her native native language. Right, great, right. great vocal true. though. That's true. Yeah. Did anyway. you just get back on the road, Pete? <laughs> um, uh, when sort of, I was up uh, 
taking a couple of days off actually, and then I got to head out on Sunday. So uh, oh, busy time. Back. Yeah, it's a busy, it's a crazy time. I got to go to Europe in a couple of days and stuff, so it's crazy. But I'm glad I got to see you guys. Glad to yeah, see you, Feet. Right on, yeah, man. To I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go over to my place now, and all right. uh, I'll continue watching. I want to live on all that. Right. I want to live on that yeah, street. Exactly. Come on, man. It's yeah, right. a, a good place to be, man. It what is a place. Man. Rock Central, North Hollywood. There you go. All right, there, buddy. See you soon, man. Safe travels, buddy. <laughs> that's great. That was cool. All I've got yeah. is my. I can get my cat to make an appearance here, but that's you. Uh, I've had my me. cat make an appearance before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm traipsing across the Pandem desk. Pandemic times, doing it from home. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Starts meowing. <laughs> <laughs> this one's yeah. quiet. She won't yell at me. I'll, at least I don't think. We'll see. So Please. one before we get into. Uh, super chats and questions that we've got yeah. from folks um you were in the middle of the story and uh yeah but you know the the thing i think that's amazing because you were saying it's just not the the essence of putting two different uh delay times together to come up with what you're doing i mean it's it's really to make it musical and make it blend and to trail yeah. light and everything it's it sounds you know, it just sounds amazing right off the bat you, you know you. Even if you're not doing Andy's dual delay thing, even if you're using it as a mo like just a delay, right? Right. Sonically, it sounds great. Awesome, man. And what I mean by that, it's for me, what sounds great is you know that that old rack gear, you know, that lexicons and things yeah. like that that you, you know, might have had in the past. Uh, those just sound is so good, and mm -hmm. and you know, and a lot of times in this day and age with just DSP pedals and stuff, it's it's kind of like I kind of look at it like well that's the cd version of uh, or no that's the mp3 version <laughs> oh shit yeah. of, right 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 of the album <laughs> yeah you know yeah. and it, it, it you know those old things had this richness and this hard to put into words what it is the, no you know, for right? sure for sure Feel and tone and like right. this this uh probably just coloration really you know different, yeah. different kinds of coloration and yeah. the cool thing about this box is that you can make it be whatever you want it to be sort of you it know? is highly uh, it's highly tweakable i mean we spent we spent the majority of the time on trying to get that sound that i was looking for but what they did in the process was make it so highly tweakable like you're talking about david that you can really tailor it yeah to the type of echo that you want you know yeah, you, really you want it can. darker play with the tone knob you want the the, the high pass filter okay great and that saturate that saturation saturate. now the yeah. saturation yeah <laughs> i brought this up to robert i go i have never heard a delay pedal that sounds so good in front of an already distorted amplifier oh nice okay yeah that was so, one of the best compliments i got thank you that was if cool. you if you put this in front of a raging distorted amp and you set it up with the saturation kind of cranked on it oh okay it blends in it almost sounds like it's in the loop of the amp wow see i haven't tried that thank yeah, you for, thanks for that really tip. <laughs> really cool sounding you do that i actually like if i'm like going to an old marshall or something and it's distorted uh i, I crank the saturation all the way up wow, wow, wow. Uh, if it's a distorted yeah. quite distorted you can kind of match it to how distorted the amp is but is the um, level low? Is the level quite low because of it being distorted? What uh, the level of the pe on the pedal? Are you? Oh, you mean the mix? Yeah, the or, mix. The level. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's the other thing that's great too. Even even when you do that, the level has a lot of play in it. So it's not like some stuff where you know, if you're going into a distorted amp like that, the level is like, well, it's off and now it's too much. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, exactly. we don't have that with this. This is done properly. Awesome. It's it, it, it's perfect for that, and then you and then you dial in the tone if you want it a little darker, a little brighter, depending on, you know, how you want it, or uh, you know, you got I guess all the other stuff too, modulation and yeah. The the, the, the I can't wait to try that, David. I have not I've not the, run the my echo like that yet. Really yeah, fun because you can you can take the time to zero so the the distorted echoes play essentially at the same time you're playing guitar, and you have this incredible sound. I, I don't ever think of a digital, digitally based distortion as sounding particularly good, but it works with this echo. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what. Um, it's, it's, there's it, I would venture to say it's the best pedal I've ever heard, ever. 
into front of a distorted amp. Wow. That is great. If you adjust it correctly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that, and, and for me, that was the saturation all the way up. Wow. Yeah. And, oh, uh, wow. and, and then just adjust, uh, the, then just the darkness of the echo to taste, you know. Mm -hmm. Not super bright, not super dark, just somewhere, just a little yeah. rolled, little rolled off. And then I think the HP, I think I didn't have any high pass filter on. I think it was, yeah. it was all, all the way, full, uh, and uh, yeah, and, and no modulation. I just had the, just a delay with a, re, you know, repeat or two, nice. simple, <laughs> and it worked. And, and a couple people that heard it were like, "Wait, that's in front of the amp." <laughs> that was the comment of my employee that was you know, working me for years. Wow. I go, yeah, it's in front. He goes, wow. What made you discover that? Like, how were you just fucking Well, it had a saturation it? feature, so that was like, oh, well, that's to saturate the, oh, let me try this. Hmm. You know, you, you know, echoplexes kind of work cool, relatively cool in front of an amp. I venture For to sure. say it works better. Wow. Wow. So. All right. Man. Thank you. Take that, Rob. Take that, Robert yeah. Keeley. Way to go, man. <laughs> Let me plug it in my plexi later. And yeah, I was gonna yeah. say, hmm, it's giving me some mm -hmm. ideas here. Yeah, throw, throw it. Well, that's the time. thing. I, like the, EP, the, the, I was, I was running mine kind of loud and clean, but this on the edge of breakup. But the EP3s work great in front of it. Um, but now, it, and the Halo does obviously as well too. But I want to hear it now with the amp uh, gained up because I just usually kind of self defeatingly go, oh, that's, that's going to be messy. You know, I would automatically it's think, well, not that's not messy. Gonna work incredible yeah, you know. that's exciting man yeah just go in the secondary mode crank the saturation just go all yeah. the way at first and then okay and then set up the delay i mean this is just for not a double delay you know just your mm. single yeah sure sure repeat and you know a little bit of repeats adjust the mix and a little roll it off just right and yeah there you go boom nice that's awesome that's fantastic Good to know. so has the pedal been doing well since uh it's launched it it really has it has done well, one of the one of the metrics that we were talking about at the shop is that it sold um, the whole our yearly estimate in thirty days. So, it, it's <laughs> far yikes! Uh, yes, it's doing you know. well then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we're, we're gearing up, and uh, I don't. I think I don't know. We're we're well over thirty eight hundred in the first. I don't know, a couple days here. <laughs> you know. Oh, it's great. that's great! Incredible! Wow. So that's amazing. It it is. It Thanks to really David and Mark getting getting their own uh, yeah echoes there. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I mean I had to grab one, uh, especially That's great. when you start here. I, I saw the demos. I mean, I saw your demo, Andy. Yeah, uh, you know, it was made made me lust after one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Pete, Pete, showed, Pete showed it to me, and then I'm like, ah, let me play with that. <laughs> no, <Nice. laughs> well, and it's it's ultimately gratifying I, because I call, then I emailed Robert. <laughs> or, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very, very cool. So, I mean, it was very, a very selfish pedal on my part. You know, it was like this. I really wanted this very specific thing. And of course, Robert was like, well, we've got that, but we can add these other things to it. Great. But you never know if it's going to resonate with other people. Um, so it's been hugely gratifying. And I, like I say, now, now that I hear how you're running it, Dave, and everybody else is kind of doing their thing with it, how they want to run it. And mm -hmm. it's, it's just been really gratifying to know, to know that they're, everybody's digging it like they are. It's incredible. I never could have imagined it. Especially yeah. when there's so many delay pedals out there. There's a couple. Right. There's a few. <laughs> it's not like it's, it's things, things have been, things there's have been done. That's well, that's true. true. That's true. That's true. That but true. Uh, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, so, what, one of the reasons that, that, the uh, um, modulation i think sounds so good on the, on that pedal there is it it's kind of it, it's not very predictable in the way that it acts not that we have randomness uh heat in there but at different rates there's actually different styles of modulation the signals will be more or less in and out of phase and they'll they'll they have different characteristics depending on where the rate is set we 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 discovered that the rate just didn't sound good if you kept one kind of philosophy, one kind of pitch wavering the entire time, and you just made it faster. It sounded like if it sounded better if and more like what Andy liked if we changed the style of modulation around to at different rates. It's like no, at this rate we kind of do this thing and it sounds a little different and it doesn't get so pitchy and so there was a, there's a lot of nuance 
in in the the modulation even even the rate control is not a simple a simple feature mm. you know <laughs> right it, all yeah. those things I'm add ready. up together to to make to help you get a great delay sound you know and have it sit in the mix really well mm -hmm. so that's the key that's the yeah. key in the mix and for it to trail off musically it, it's like I, I wanted I wanted to uh, keep on saying that it sounded like a ducking feature, like the be world's best ducking feature in that it would it would, you know, have the delays present when you stop playing. It, it almost always seemed to know how much space was available and whether we were going to fill it up with echoes or not. Mm. But it didn't have that bizarre compressor effect that goes along with, yeah. with ducking. You know what it, I mean? That, they stay out of the way like like a good tape echo would do. Mm -hmm. and it has to do with how that how the first one, where that repeat sets, and then how they start to kind of feather or you say dissolve into each other. Mm -hmm. That creates more of kind of a reverb. -y. Exactly. Well, not obviously a very extreme uh, level there, but. So without that. <laughs> yeah, wow. That's a, yeah, that's a huge difference. And that's essentially why, you know, it's just never off. It's it's, it's really part of my tone. And I just have an expression pedal that I'll, you know, I can take it from. Sorry. I can just kind of blend it. Of course, like any other you know modern piece of gear, the expression pedal can control any of the any of the parameters. But for me, it's clearly just a just a effect level. That's what I was going to ask you how you run it. Yeah, that's it. Um, I'm sure you could be a lot more crafty with it, but I tend to use the one sound mostly, and it's just just gonna, kind of part of the, the overall. Well, that's great that you can just lower the delay if you want to get it to just dry. Yeah. Like no. That. Absolutely. And there's obviously in certain sections you might want a bit more drama and more sustain. I, I, I kind of liken it also kind of like it's my sustain pedal on a piano. So I can get notes to just have that duration, more of a vocal quality. Right, and then others not. Yeah, that, that, that saturate control and that, that the filtering that we do there and is one of the reasons why that the infinite hold that, that sustain works so well and doesn't doesn't blossom out of control because not only do we have that compression and saturation on it, but there's elements of the signal that are out of phase with each other. And so that kind of keeps this. It keeps it from just building endlessly and exploding and distorting in that thing. So I, I, that saturate control is also <laughs> instrumental in why the, the infinite feedback is that hold like that. Right. And doesn't just, you know, get that typical digital distortion sound. Hmm. <laughs> Impressive. That's really cool. Yeah. The key is to hang out with smart people, folks. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes it's I know smart people. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, the, it, but it's like the Bob Ross thing, where it's like sometimes there's lots of happy accidents. You know, there's yeah. there's mistakes or miscalculations in the in the code that uh, sound better. <laughs> <laughs> right on. According to Andy's ears, it sounds better, <laughs> even though we well, might have. That's just it. I'll never forget. Yeah. We were mastering. Um, I made a record back in 2006 called Resolution, and. Uh, we'd send our final mixes off to mastering and we got the, the they would send a, a test pressing of the CD to you to check out. And it was clearly not what we'd sent them. And they kept saying, no, we're looking at, we're looking at the graph right now. We can tell you it's identical. <laughs> like, look at the graph while you want, but we're telling, you know, it's just one of those things you numbers and, and graphs don't necessarily mean what you're going to hear, right? You got to trust, trust your ears. And again, that was the key, man, with, with Robert and Aaron. We, got, we were in the room and could really listen together, regardless yeah. of what the, the data was trying to tell us, right? You know, <laughs> there it was. But that, yeah, man. It's also very hard to put on the brakes 
because like you you might have been at a point where you were completely enthusiastic about the sound but i was worrying about and my team was worrying about you know a variety of other problems that were sure, going on sure. in time, whether it could be chain supply solutions for even being able to build the darn thing. Yeah. Oh, God. yeah. Try, you know what I mean? To, you know, every possible. And was that a know. big problem? It's been a problem numerous times during this. I mean, it was the reason why it wasn't released in January, but waited till June. Um, so we could yeah. absolutely 100% be positive that we had all the parts there to, yeah. to build it. And um, we've had problems with uh, regulators uh, and microcontrollers, uh, D to A converters or codecs. We've had, a, you know, <laughs> even even probably capacitors have probably snuck in there with the halo as being a problem. You know, e everything. It's crazy. <clears throat> the new modern <laughs> world. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, you've probably seen it too, Dave. Where oh, we saw it. Yeah. It's just, all, it's just, all the parts distributors yeah. are scalping parts, buying parts, and then upcharging them. It's, yeah. It's like, what? Oh, you're really screwed when you're getting into chips. Yeah. 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 You know, and, and, and D days and A to Ds and, and like all, everything you said, <clears throat> you were a little screwed for a while on some capacitors and some things, but that seems to have kind of yeah. uh, coming back in stock and everything, you know, seems to be coming back now. Um, but yeah, chips not so much still. <laughs> I know. No, it's very problematic. You're not the you're not the only one. I mean, there's people out there uh, that make even more advanced products that are just like, well, we can't make any. Yeah. What do you? When are you going to be able to make some? Oh, I don't know. A year and a half from now. Yeah. Those are the ETAs on. You know how part. to how to. That's how to kill a company. Yeah. yeah. No, we 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 have literally had to redesign that platform. Um, numerous times to uh, otherwise we couldn't have built it at all we would have had to stop production we had to redesign and do it a different way to mm. you know avoid a uh, part shortage mm. <laughs> it's, mm. it's really it's really difficult to keep up with all those changes and <laughs> you know mm. and everything so sure absolutely yeah it's a lot of challenges to keep pumping <laughs> out product you know yeah I'm, um, I'm, yeah, I want to remind, uh, we also have our other sponsor, I totally forgot, FixPedalBoard.com, FixPedalBoards.com. Uh, they're also running a special, Dave, right? Yeah. For What's... any Tone Talk, you have it in your, I gave it to you. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, thought you, I thought you wanted to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to look. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, discount for Tone Talk, folks. Uh, when you go to the FixPedalBoards.com. Uh, type in Tone Talk 15. It gets you 15% off your order at checkout. So check out Tim's site at fixpedalboards.com. All right. Um, sorry about that. And then we also got some questions. From Yay. Folks. So uh, let's dive in. Fabio Mariera. Uh, hi from Taiwan. Best show ever. Met Andy at a clinic here. The best tone I ever heard live <laughs> and the nicest guy on planet Earth. Thank you, Fabio. The check is in the mail, as they say. Um, that's my one fan. Nice to hear from you, Fabio. I've been fortunate to go to Taiwan many times and uh, had some good clinics there and some very good uh, dumplings at uh, Din Tai Fung. Oh, <laughs> if, if you know, you know. If you know, you know. That's the, I think the, the original Din Tai Fung is uh, there in uh, Taipei. So, yeah. Wow. <laughs> but nice to, nice to hear now from you, man. And thank you for the compliment. I, pre I appreciate it so much. No problem. Yeah. Uh, we got a super chat from Plexico. Uh, hi, all. A quad of experts. <laughs> quad. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Plexico. Um, I'm guessing he plays Plexis in Mexico, but I don't want to be profiling. <laughs> I don't want to be profiling here. Uh, Sparks and Guitars says the Halo pedal is amazing. Awesome, man. Mike. Thank you, thank you Mike. <laughs> Appreciate that very much. Oh, yeah. You know, okay. His checks also yeah, on the mail? Yeah, yeah exactly. Check, exactly. Check we owe mail. a lot. One dollar ninety seven cents. <laughs> One dollar. Yeah, he's he's almost he's almost family. We <laughs> we're so, yeah, we're right? funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh Pascal Guitar. Uh Andy, my favorite tone has always been the Gone and Ghost 
oh, of your yeah. theme parts on resolution, brilliant Thank album. You. Sounds like a good old Plexi, was it? Yeah, so, well, those, the, the, those are from the same record. This, those are both from the resolution record. And the majority of that record are these two marshals here, um, mostly running loud and clean. And I would use a, a, a four knob, no, I'm sorry, a three knob, uh, two work tube driver, then a being those into two tape echoes, usually the EP3. Um, into the front of those marshals, but uh, gone, yeah. I think that was neck pickup and kind of a, a little bit of gain. It could have been my memory serves maybe a tube screamer in front of it. But Ghost of You was actually a JCM 800 with a, the two outer tubes pulled for the 50 watt kind of thing, so that was an actual gained up marshal. All the other gain on the record was usually from a pedal, but uh, but thank you for the compliment. I'm glad you let. See if I can get a little bit of the gone tone here. So the way, the way I do that sound now is I've got a, <laughs> this is the second Robert Keeley modded blues driver that I've stolen. <laughs> so the first one from Nick Kinnerk that I've had on my board for years, but this, the board that I'm playing through right now is a temporary board that Daniel Steinhardt built for me for the recent, uh, that pedal show tour, tour that we did back in uh, late June in the UK. So that's his Keeley modded blues driver. So that's it. If I open up the guitar all the way, it's... <laughs> like a slightly gained up Marshall, but if I back the volume knob down here, it's a nice kind of clean crystal. to the treble bleed also on the on the volume knob so it doesn't get too muddy. But thanks for that question. Uh, I don't have the name up on the screen anymore, but thank you for that. By the way, which amp are you running? Are you running the Mesa? This is the two. Yeah, I've got two Lone Stars. I'm running into one and slaving it out uh, through the through the halo. So then that the other the other side just feeds back into the effects return of the uh, of the slave head. So just the same tone, just one tone circuit here. And mainly clean channel, I'll run that, uh, here's just a Carl Martin compressor in front of it, and then here's with the RC booster for a little top. Blues driver. Uh, then I can use the, I have a signature JHS uh, AT pedal. So here's just the amp. That's the pedal. The um the Lone Stars, which they don't, they sadly don't make the amp anymore. Um, I'm not sure why they discontinued it, but they did. Something maybe about the transformer becoming very pricey but um they they come stock with 606s but they have switchable bias so i uh put the el34s in it mm. so it, it tightens up that low end considerably it's a pretty tubby amp to start with um yeah makes it feel a little bit more like the the marshall thing that i like and then is those are those feeding cabinets are they mic'd or they, yes they're mic'd up i've got in a separate room this is like the upstairs of the home so it's like a rec room in a, in a guest bedroom so in the guest bedroom it's it's all guitars and speaker cabinets but i've got two um mesa boogie rectifier 212 cabs uh -huh. so each 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 head or this is essentially a head even though it's a compound but this feeding the head into the 212s yeah and then mic'd up with 57s cheapest mic wins <laughs> absolutely <laughs> you know but it works I, you know it's, you know you Absolutely. can try all the other stuff. Sometimes a nice Royer or there's this um, Mesasonic that I've got. That sounds kind of nice. I learned about those from Josh Smith when he uh, he he produced my last record back in. Well, it came out in April anyway. Cool. He knows about tone. That guy. 
He's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Sean Tubb says, Robert Kelly doesn't make anything that isn't top shelf. Man. Add Andy to the mix. Well, it gets even gooder. Man, he gets, he gets two <laughs> checks. Gets he gets two checks. <laughs> yeah, we'll take that. Thank you, Sean Tubbs. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Well. We've got nice friends. <laughs> uh, very kind friends. Yeah. Modern Vintage Tone Talk. Uh, Keeley Tech support are the best. Uh, the only yeah. guy from the biz to send back old and repaired pedals in a box with case candy, uh -huh. handwritten note, immediate turnaround, longtime customer. Man, thing. how cool is that? Yeah, I want to give a shout out to my, my service guy, Sean Spears and Jason Trexler. Sean Spears is the service manager, and we uh, both of us kind of have this well, have the same philosophy. But I started thinking, how could I turn service and, and a repair thing into, you know, as good as possible? And so we started, you know, being kind of ex trying to be excited when a repair came in, get it out in 24 hours. Otherwise, nice. you know, since we make the boards, you know what I mean? Yeah. I should have all the parts in stock to, to get this thing going if we can't figure it out. And so we try to make sure everything goes out within 24 hours. And then... You know, we, you know, cheer them along with some free picks or swag or something like that to try to make it a pleasant experience, you know what I mean? So I, awesome. I found that that just that just totally wins the day. It's smart. It's Making smart. people getting over the fact that, yeah, the pedal broke, darn it. You know, we're, we don't always make top shelf stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it breaks. Stuff happens. <laughs> yeah, stuff does break, man. Uh, and, yeah. it does. and, you so, know, it, it's got to be fixed quickly. You know what I mean? Before That's the guy can man. even almost miss it, you know, <laughs> it's got to be there that fast. And, you know, so we've got to get it right, you know, and that, That's that really awesome, works. Man. And Sean Spears is the right guy. He loves talking to guitar players. So it's, it's a positive event. If your pedal happens to break, you know, nice. yeah. oh. I, I, I sort of do the same thing. So I do yeah. all the customer service for Friedman. So okay. if you email Friedman, the only person you can get is me. <laughs> nice. No one right. else has any access to the email. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, so if I drop if I drop dead one day, uh, <laughs> you may not hear from you. <laughs> you. May not hear from you. The um, guy with the broken amp will know first. <laughs> exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, well, kudos, uh, guys. What I mean, what a, what a concept to be to to treat your customers with that utmost respect. I, I love that so much. Well, it's, the way I always looked at it for yeah. me, what I mean, I have someone that can help facilitate uh, sending things out and things like that, where I pass on pass it on to him where he, he does that a uh, guy at our company, Vlad, uh, who's the right hand man with that. And, um, but how I looked at it was if someone else is going to do this job, they are not going to know the answers, generally speaking. Right. You know? yeah. Um, and then they're going to have to ask me yeah. and then I'm going to have to tell them <laughs> and then they're going to have to tell the customer. And by it, you know, yeah. it's just too much. It's just easier for me to shoot an email back off my phone yeah. because, you know, and I answer, I, if people will tell you, well, he answered me on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he answered me in the middle of the night. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like, right. if I look and I, I, cause I can't let them stack up. I, I have a problem with that. I can't, I, if that, then it's too much. So yeah. if I have to answer that's three it. emails or five emails real quick. That's no big mm -hmm. deal, but. That's awesome. Man. So they like that generally. So yes. that's, a, that's, that's a good thing. That's you know, awesome. Customer man. service. And, and, and unfortunately, people, things do break. Yeah. Uh, you know, and yes. plus, or you have defective parts that you didn't make. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> like I remember one time we had a defective batch of filter caps. Oh, every, wow. Almost every single amp that went out had a defective oh, filter no. cap in it. Yipes. And it was still replacing filter caps to this day. Wow. <laughs> really? Wow, wow. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, it still comes up. I mean, fortunately, if it winds up being a used amp, then, well, then, then it's off the, the, the warranty. But, yeah, um, maps. but still, even people that buy used amps, I'll be like, I'll tell you what, pay for the shipping, I'll fix it for free. Yeah. You know, yeah. stuff like that. Or like with mine, you sent me out the caps. Yeah, nah, there you go. Yeah, right. Got it. Cool. Got it. Got it. But, you know, Much. stuff happens, you know, all of a sudden, hey, you know, this one pot that we have is failing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, we didn't do it. It's not because we're we made a shoddy product. Right. You know, it, it's it's not because it's, you know, a cheap, crappy part. 
Hmm. You only have so many choices with pods. <laughs> yeah. It just fails. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a just, mechanical thing. It, it yeah. will fail. <laughs> it's driving me a little crazy on some of the and stuff. Especially with pedals. I mean, eventually, you, you know, you use it, something stomps on it, you can break the power supply jack. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know any Or they, you know, my pedal doesn't work anymore. Okay. Now, did you try a new battery? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you've heard that one. <laughs> oh, there's a battery in it? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've got every kind. Oh yeah. yeah. Let's see. If my mouse will work. Uh, Dale Antuniak. Um, no question, but a super chat. If I see your question, I will pull it up. Um, oh, Jason Tong from Australia is here. Hello, Jason. Jason's hey. always here. Yeah, Jason's <laughs> awesome. You uh, officially have no life. Well, <laughs> well, actually, it's Australia, so it's Saturday and it's in the morning. It's morning, Saturday yeah, morning. morning. So I, I guess, I guess you're not busy in the morning. <laughs> hmm. Harmonicaster, thanks for uh, the super chat. Can Robert and Dave discuss supply chains? Bucket ISP told me manufacturers are discontinuing discontinuing some transistors. Hmm. Also, please discuss full tone shutting down. Those are great questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think Dave and I hit on the supply chain issues. I don't know. I think it's it's just going to be with us for a while, kind of like a, a, a long half life on this whole whole thing for a while. So maybe a couple more years of supply chain issues. Uh, yeah. As far as stuff discontinuing, I don't know. I haven't seen too much of that, but I mean, routinely, End of Jay life said. happens to parts all the time. I mean, this is not a normal, you know, this is a normal thing. It's like, oh, we can't use that part anymore. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, time to redesign. <laughs> time, time, time to use a different one. Okay, wait, what can we sub? Yeah. Um, you know, in addition to uh, full tone shutting down, I was curious if you guys saw the post from um, Analog Man that he had, he bought fake, fake uh, parts. And he, <laughs> did you see that? He got... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he, I guess he, put him in, he put it in like a hundred King of Tone boards, and they oh, it was casters. Yeah, oh, man. yeah, caps, electrolytic yeah. caps or something. Yeah. Uh, well, what's the current status with tubes? Obviously, that has been tubes are two, two, tubes are okay. That was a, there was a minute of a lull there. Uh, I mean, yeah. uh, although uh, anything Russian has um, literally doubled in price. Wow. So a Russian 12x7 that say I was using uh, Mike Matthews is mm -hmm. now charging me double <laughs> wholesale double right okay. wow. Wow. <laughs> for that tube yeah. and uh, and uh, so fortunately some other uh, Chinese vendors have come online um, um, mm -hmm. PS vein tubes uh, have have been around for a while in the hi-fi world but they've kind of uh they really took the bull by the horns and really started ramping into the the guitar market oh nice okay. so um those are quite good um so we're starting to use some of that stuff and then mm -hmm. the the older chinese plant is supposedly going to be back up operational in january wow, so okay that'll probably be okay and then there's you can still get some russian tubes at an increased cost of course yeah everything sure. went up yeah what everything about the, went up what about jj Tubes. Are they Yugoslavia? Uh, well, JJ tubes, uh, you can get. The problem with JJ is they were, because of the pandemic, they had become extremely back ordered. Mm. So they couldn't, uh, mm -hmm. they stopped taking new orders because the back orders were so immense that they needed to fill their back orders before they mm -hmm. would do that. So that, when we, when this, when the, when the Russian thing happened, we were like, okay, how about JJ? Oh, well, they won't take even a new order. Hmm. Uh, for another year and a half. Wow. <laughs> okay, <That's crazy. laughs> I see. Yeah. Wow. So I mean, we're okay. still going on. We're, uh, yeah, they're not taking new orders, so they're still filling their old orders. I, what wow. had happened is <clears throat> during the pandemic, they had, uh, you know, some people were off work for a while, or they were closed for a while. I'm not sure the exact story. Some people chose not to come back. They retired because they were older, and they just decided to retire finally. Mm -hmm. 
So they lost some of their uh, work staff. Uh, so then that put them even further behind because they have less people. Um, snowballs, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So then I guess there's still another part of that question, full tone. Full tone, yes. Yeah. <laughs> full tone, so you know, I got to give Mike, Mike credit for the fact that he was the <laughs> origin, original boutique builder. Yeah. He was. He, I think he, 19, he did it first. 1993. Yeah. yeah. 1993. I he think did it first, I think. And uh, yeah. It's funny, my, uh, my employee, Jamie, he, he goes, you think this is going to be worth a lot now? And he shows me a picture, and it was uh, number three of his Octavia. Hmm. And it and it didn't even say full tone. It just said by Mike Fuller. <laughs> and I, and I'll like in a, this hand-painted sort of box, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that, that's probably going to be worth some money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah what, was the, what, was, what was the reason for him uh, – calling it quits what oh who knows okay it, i mean yeah. you know it, it says you know he, um business is not uh doing as well he's not making yeah. money california is expensive to run a business in yeah extremely um and he didn't want to sink money out of his pocket into it yeah that's what okay. officially he said essentially I gotcha. Now they are selling yeah. off old stock. Now what that means and how long that goes on, I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. How much? Well, so I'm sure everyone now is scrambling to buy some from him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Going well, not, a bad, not a bad marketing move. <laughs> not a bad marketing move either. Yeah. If, you know, yeah, but I'm so. sure that's not. I mean, I don't know. M yeah. Mike's fine. Yeah. Well, he yeah, came in, in his letter. He really said house he's, in Nashville. It, it, he's okay. Good. Yeah, he's going to retire and play guitar, which is yeah, pretty much everybody's dream. So, I mean, I'd love yeah. to be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Please let me do that. <laughs> exactly. So, like like Dave said, he he is the original boutique guy. I, I the first the first uh, say twenty Keeley compressors all had. Uh, full tone switches in them. I bought them mm -hmm. from Mike wow. from really? Oklahoma. I wow. remember writing, you know, I got like one or two in. I, I remember back then, if you bought a single stomp switch, it was $16. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He was exactly. the first guy to make that stomp switch, too. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, I, I love this story because this is this is 2001 for me. And so I'm just getting ready to start trying to figure out how I can build these Keeley compressors, you know, and uh, I write him and I'm like trying to save up money to buy switches. And I'm like, man, I wonder if he'd give me a discount if I if I bought 10 switches from him. So I'm like, OK, I'd like to place an order for 10 switches. You know, is there any chance I could get a deal on it? And he writes back and I love the guy. I mean, I talked to him a couple days ago. Right. <laughs> so. Um, He's like, 10 is not a quantity <laughs> type of number, you know? Now, if you want to buy 20, I'll give them to you at half price. And I was like, what? okay, whatever, dude. <laughs> I'll take 20 at $8. <laughs> and, and, you know, I got, I got a, a good cousin, you know, that, that 10 was not volume discount type number. The 21. Like, 21. So you still got this, you got 20 for oh, the price yeah. of 10, though. And, right. and I, I've, I've always been so. I'm not good at math, love, but it seems to be working I out pretty it. well. I, I loved it. I loved it. But Mike, I, I was always great, very grateful for uh, Mike because I always felt like he could have, back in, in 2002, 3, 4, 5, he could have easily released a compressor and, and squashed me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. a, a little guy mm -hmm. in Oklahoma trying to build compressors. Uh, I only had a little margin to work with to eke in the, the world, you know, besides mods. But uh, so I was always so grateful that he didn't because uh, I figured that would be a death knell for me. So mm. I don't know. I, was I that, told him that by chance? He, was that by chance or he consciously stayed I, I remember, out of it? I remember talking to him and tell him how grateful I was. And I I think I recall him saying that he, he just couldn't get the an idealized uh, compression sound out of out of a pedal design that he wanted and you mm. know he moved on to other other things you know what i mean he was probably full-time busy with ocd you know he yeah. didn't have compressor in mind <laughs> yeah that so. pedal 
that that pedal when that came out that was it's what a surge of pedal sales I, you yeah. know i i never i don't quite get i don't i i it's okay yeah I, it wasn't it's not for me it's but... a tube screamer right no <laughs> not really. no, it's not a not no? All. all right well then no. what is it i think technically it's it's some kind of uh, voodoo labs overdrive and with mm. with his own tone control added to it and a couple changes mm. on, on how the the, the type of diodes used in the clipping yeah is, is one of the things and mm. it, it evolved over time yeah and, well there are a lot of different versions i know and, that. yeah mm. and you can find some that have uh definitely more bass than others and you can find ones that that just simply clip differently because of maybe voltages and and op amp selection or something like that but um but uh yeah it, it is it, it's interesting in that uh it's kind of a, a a basic design, but it seems like a lot of people seem to enjoy yeah. uh, the way it sounds. I thought I think it was also kind of brilliant in that it was priced right. He never he never uh, had true. a boutique inflated price with it, so it was always pretty reasonable, yeah. especially when you held it in your hand. And you're like, dang, that's a chunk of metal. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah, I think that my first pedal that I got with him early on was um, the full drive. Oh yeah, and that yeah, was the blue. Plan. The blue full drive. The tram, the that, the Octavia, the you know, the Deja Vibe. Sixty nine uh, and seventy. Sixty nine is great. Seventy is great. I really kind of like the seventy. Mm-hmm. Um, I always wanted to buy the. Tube, the tube. was a cool pedal too that he came oh, out yeah. with. Um, I had the tube tape echo that first. One I was going to say out. that I've I got am. one. I've that got was on part of the echo. resolution record. Yeah, and I and I also like that his original vibe, the larger vibe. That yeah, was a nice yeah, one. yeah, yeah. Really sounded good. Yeah. So. Well, we wish him well. Yeah, whatever. We'll the next see. He didn't. He didn't really necessarily rule out the fact that he was going to completely stop making pedals either. He might. Make no, he said because he, he said he's going to protect. Open. He's going to protect his trade. Yeah, he left it open. open so. Oh, okay. So may may make some pedals along the so way. So the glass is half full tone. Sorry. <laughs> it's getting it's getting late, you know. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of a lot of news. Lately, in the uh, the, wor- the music world, it seems, uh, mm. and all these things. Um, all right, let's see. Mm. Modern vintage. Uh, Robert, we need to hear about what happened when John Mayer started using the Katana V ones. To this day, two of those are om- on almost all of his boards. Yeah, that's another thing I'm really grateful for. Um, that Katana is actually my first design, and I remember uh, I had met. Uh, Jack Orman online and Jack Orman uh, this is back in 2001 he he told me he's like have you have you played with a Klon pedal what do you think about it and I was like man nah, I don't know too much about it he's like well it, it what, one of the interesting things about it is it uses a charge pump a voltage doubler and I thought huh that's pretty cool I said that that's a great way I didn't realize they had them in small packages like that and I said I want to do something that's like a class A tube amp, but with JFET. I just, and, and so he, he kind of encouraged that thought and I put the two together. So, and, uh, that's what the Katana is. And, uh, I tuned the, the, the filtering by ear and, and just hoped for the best. And I, I came up with that crazy side mounted knob thing, which mm-hmm. is a kind of a very peculiar thing. <laughs> I was thinking that, you know, somebody might take their foot and move the, the volume with it but you know I, th- I think i take more ridicule than <laughs> anything else <laughs> on that such a silly design plus Takes not only from customers but from my own staff yeah, yeah from my own staff they're like oh god we hate building these things <laughs> so you know but uh yeah it it, it does uh it does sound it does sound pretty good it's one of those things where sometimes you get lucky and and you have a sound that that appeals to a lot of people and i, I i'm i'm his pedal that katana has been on there for like i don't know eight years or more or something so mm. he, he likes he feels comfortable with it <laughs> you know hey Andy, are you still using the uh the jhs your signature pedal as well yeah that's that's the main the main Later. gain the main oh, game right, yeah. and you use that live as well yeah i sure do yeah that's again but with this setup it's it's been my main gain i'll, I'll use the uh the lead channel on the the lone star occasionally with a little bit of gain in front of it, it's a it's a pretty woolly channel on its own without the. Uh... What's it based on? 
Which uh, which pedal or the amp? No, the JHS pedal. I have no idea. It, well, it's basically it's based on he had a pedal called the Angry Charlie. Now whether that's based on something else or uh, not, okay. I'm not really sure. So it was a situation where I had started using uh, the Angry Charlie on my board because it, uh, one gig I went because I was using the Lone Star lead channel with a with a tube screamer in front of it for my main lead tone but i was doing a clinic in in england and the effects loop stopped working so in order for me to be able to have my echo sound at the time i would have had to use a drive pedal in front of that otherwise i would have gotten the messy echoes um and so i had this angry charlie because it had been recommended to me by a buddy of mine and i just immediately started realizing well I'm, i like the articulation better than what i was getting out of the amp it's a pretty woolly tone like i was saying and so um i started using it on the regular and and i went to i was at a nam show after i've been using it for a while and i said oh, i should go meet you know josh at jhs to say hi and uh so i'm glad you came in because you know all of a sudden we started selling a lot of these pedals <laughs> i guess because it was on my board he was saying but if you'd like to change some things we could mod it and maybe do something with it so it's a mod basically a modded angry charlie i i, I just looked it up that it's supposedly the Angry Charlie is a uh, Marshall Governor. Oh, Charlie. really? Okay. Oh, yeah. That's good. I never, I never had one of those, but I bet. But I, I, I know that Josh is, is, is heavily tweaked. I think that the yeah. lead boost channel on that Andy Timmons, I think he told me that that was a, like a, a complete tube screamer circuit set up for your favorite type it's, of It's exactly that. I Yeah, we copied my TS-808, basically, hmm. to use that as a boost. But it's something we're still, I, I still want to tweak with it because it really was, it's my idea about having that in there was to kind of scoop out a little bit of the low end because, you know, when we get when we get a lead tone dialed in, where am I at here? Let me go here. When I get that sounding the way I want it, that's not going to work on the, on the neck pickup. It's a little messy, but if I if I hit that boost, well, that's a little pedal, isn't it? I was trying. It, it does work as a nice boost, but what I'm really trying to do is get my lead tone set up, but then have the neck pickup be usable with a similar tone. So anyway, work in progress. There might be a version three at some point. Mm. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. But okay. but as far as the lead tone goes on my bridge pickup, it's it's my favorite by far. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, awesome. Um, mm. Hey, I saw in here uh, Lyle Caldwell. If anyone knows him, was in the ch in the chat. Hi, Lyle. How are you? Hello, Lyle. Justin Stokes. Hello, Justin. Two dollars. Uh, Justin. Two dollars. <laughs> Give us two dollars. Thank, uh, thank you. I don't that's see your, fifty I cents a piece, know. fellas. What are we gonna do? <laughs> get a couple of hamburgers back in there. Yeah, back in the back, uh, in, back in when <laughs> back, back, back in when, the fifties maybe back in when Wimpy was buying them on Popeye. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I gladly pay you two. Yeah, exactly. Right. Two, two bits, four bits. Uh, okay, we've got uh, modern vintage again. Dave, best years for a JCM eight hundred. How are the first slash 800s, 96 JCM, 125-55 SL, hand-wired, good parts, PCB, lower quality? Well, the slash wasn't an 800. It was a Jubilee, essentially. Um, uh, so that's a very different circuit from an 800. Uh, I mean, an 800, I mean, I guess early, early the first era up and down input 800s were cool. Uh, but honestly, I just go for the 2203 from earlier, later 70s, which is like what you have here. I don't know. Actually, I don't know if that's a, a 50 watt or 100 watt that Andy has there. Oh, but. that's a, that's a, I think it's a 79. Is it's it a 100 watt? It's a 100 watt. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a 2203, which is the same okay. thing as the 800. It's, okay. it's just that. The transformers are a little bit better in those than they were in the 800s. So oh, okay. they sound a little bit richer i think nice. but so many people like the 800 okay so those yeah. aren't the drakes uh no it's the same manufacturers as they changed um they just it just got they got cheaper oh really <laughs> <laughs> they didn't sound quite as rich hmm. interesting um oh okay so he and then then he wanted to know are they hand wired good parts lower quality and then the same for the zach wild and Ingve Malmsteen signature amps. 
Those uh, are the Zach Wild was a straight up 800, um, made the same way it had been for years, which is partially hand wired. It's a PC board in the middle, and the rest are hand wired. Um, I have no idea about the YJM. I haven't seen it in person. But isn't that a, based on a Plexi? Yeah, it's not an 800 at all. So yeah, it's a different different app. Hmm. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the well, question. Well, 800 is based on a Plexi too. If you really want to get down to it. Well, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And if you really want to get down to it, they're all based on a basement. <laughs> oh, that's <based>, right. <laughs> Way to go, Leo, once again. Yeah. 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 True. True. Uh, I just want to make sure I get all people's questions here. Oh, here's Justin. Uh, Robert, how is compression from an overdriven amp different from a compressor compressor pedal? In about every measurable way. Yeah, totally, <laughs> well, completely uh, different. Yeah, but um, the compression from a tube, uh, an overdriven tube amp. Well, let's say maybe if, if there's some compression from the power supply sagging, and you know you get some compression artifacts as the maybe the rectifier circuit recovers. I guess that's a little bit of compression, but uh, the way a pedal does it is 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 like a little magic uh, volume control on that, you know, and adding or subtracting gain from the circuit, depending on how much, you know, volume is, is coming out of the amplifier or the OTA in the first place. So uh, what, one of, I think, I think the saturation from tubes or, you know, when you, if you clip the signal like that, that, that kind of saturation and the compression that comes from the tube amp is a, a little bit different than, than what we do with a pedal, you know, so. It's 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 a definitely yeah, I mean, a different, and circuit. it sounds different with the pedal. You're leveling out the the leveling out the peaks of the guitar going into the amp. Yeah. So so yeah. you're you're essentially um, so you know if you pick a guitar really lightly, um, it's oh who knows it's uh, hundred millivolts let's say, uh, or maybe even less than that or if really light. And if you smack a humbucker into a clean amp really, really hard, it might be 250 millivolts of, of signal. Mm -hmm. So the compressor is going to level those two signals out. So yeah. the 250 comes down and the, 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 the really uh, light playing comes up. Um, and nothing, there's not an equivalent in, the, in a tube amp circuit. Nothing is no. making uh, those distinctions. Now I know they, they're all... It's the I'm same sorry, wording, right? though. They, they use the same wording quite a bit, you know, to describe what's going on because you know on some level the same thing is happening you know but it's a compressor effect pedal is is designed to do exactly what dave said to get in there and make small things very much louder and make loud things you know which is very it. handy on a clean sound with a guitar yeah you know? <laughs> or a clean bass and you right? can <laughs> smack the guitar and it just goes bling, you know that, yeah. that beautiful i like i love that sound yeah. yes yeah I, I find that I mean I've, I try to experiment it with a an overdriven amp and it doesn't really sound that great. So no, no with, but Pete Townsend used to use a Dynacomp to 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 boost his high watts. Oh, nice! Actually, I think he still has a Dynacomp in his setup. <laughs> wow! To boost it? Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's compressing, but it's also driving more signal level into the amp. Yeah, nice. Hmm. Yeah. Well. Considering with him because he's so percussive in the way he plays, anyway, yeah, would be kind of yeah, it makes sense, yeah. I guess. Um, uh, this is a question. Oh, before actually, before we dive into that question, I wanted to say, Andy, um, yeah. sorry for your loss with uh, Olivia Newton John. Yeah, it's I, that's been a tough one, man. That's thank huge you, huge fan, huge fan of her, yeah, obviously, and grew up with her, uh, yeah, my entire childhood was watching her grow you know in greece and of course her career so yeah, yeah. Uh, what a talent for those that don't know yeah, i was her uh, guitar player and music director for about 15 years you know in between my own gigs and and doing simon phillips's tours and stuff yeah that was she was a very very dear friend and uh yeah it's 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 been a tough one but you know she'd been sick for a while this was her third bout with uh, with cancer and but 73 man that's way too young but what a what a bright light man she did so much good in, oh, her, yeah. in, in her years, you know? Yeah, she was... Very blessed old, to have been working with her all that time. Such a positive woman. Yeah. 
Yeah, every no, she, time you see her, she's smiling, and regardless of what was going on in her very, life. Very, very graceful, I will say that. I saw her go through yeah. a lot, you know, and then always handle it with the most dignity a human could possibly could, you know. Mm. How'd you get hooked up with her? How'd that work? That was, well, actually through Simon Phillips, believe it or not. So mm. she she had breast cancer in the early 90s and, and basically had retired um, for many years. But in the late 90s, I think she did a handful of shows in uh in australia where she was living and uh the john farnham band was backing her it was, he was he's like a legendary huge star over there kind of like the springsteen of australia and um so she you know kind of had her toe back in the water so she was they were going to br bring that australian band and have her do some shows in the states but one of the guitar players brett garzid um great amazing guitar player couldn't do the dates so um Toto is managed by Fitzgerald Hartley at the time, who was also managing Olivia. So the, the you know management just put the word out through the ranks. Hey, you know, we need a guitar player. Who do you guys know? And so Simon just, well, call Andy. You know, he knew my work ethic and thought I might be right for the gig. And so I had a message on my show. Andy, you fancy working with Olivia Newton-John? You know, <laughs> All right, what, are, what are the hours, right? Uh, <laughs> so it just kind of worked out that that first tour was, it was like a, maybe two months of dates in the States and it went really, really great. And management saw, you know, how I'd come in and was, you know, on top of things. So they thought, we'll, we'll make, we'll make Andy the music director and for the U.S. dates, we'll just put a U.S. band together and have Andy lead that band. And that's, that's the way it kind of started. I wouldn't, I didn't realize it was going to, you know, lead to so many years of, uh, of, you know, friendship and, and work but man we had so many great times together i can't begin to tell you just and because she was just a good hang you know mm -hmm. it was it wasn't like you know star and band it was that because you were working with an icon you know but she very much just liked to hang and we'd you know go into movies and just sit around singing tunes she knew every show tune standard any beatles tune we were both big beatles nuts so mm. a lot a lot of great times together so it's uh it's gonna take a while to uh come to terms with it but uh, she's obviously missed by so many around the world but those around her that really knew her you know it's i always would just tell people it's as cool as she you think she might have been it was better you know just oh, a genuine yeah. genuine soul that you know if you met her you just feel like you knew her forever you know just made everybody very comfortable and yeah. sweet soul but hard worker man i you know just tireless uh whatever she was into whatever she was working on but did so much for breast cancer and cancer awareness um, ended up with her own, you know, her name attached to a hospital in, in Australia that she worked tirelessly 10 mm -hmm. years of getting the funding for and all that to just, just try to help others, man. Yeah. Good way to go. Yeah. Yeah. She's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah sorry, to, sorry to see that. No, before. man. It's, it's, it's been hard <clears throat> on a lot of people, but thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Mm -hmm. um, this is another question for you. When can we expect the Danger Danger <laughs> biopic? <laughs> <laughs> what what floop de do? Well, that's, that's, that's appropriate. Uh, you know, I, th anything's possible, I suppose. But I'm not sure who wants to see that. But uh, you know, now they, so they, and the, again, I, I'm just assuming not everybody knows my history. But yeah, Danger Danger was my uh, back in the kind of the hair band days. We were a Bon Jovi kind of wannabe group and had some uh, you know MTV exposure back in the late '80s and had some good fun. Uh, I remember you guys. Yeah, we got to, we, it was kind of one of those things where I, I'd grown up as a, you know, just a fan of 70s rock and I was learned how to play guitar by listening to Kiss Alive and, and Nugent and, and Rush and Foghat and all that. So, but then after, you know, I, I, as I was growing musically and studied classical and jazz and I wanted to be Mike Stern and Larry Carlton at, at a certain point, you know, and after I left, the, I went to the University of Miami for a couple of years, I ended up in texas and uh but then got this call to join this you know rock band i'm like well all right this might be my only shot at the major label you know thing that we all i think we all thought that was kind of the holy grail as a musician right, it's fine. i'm yeah. in a band that's you know signed to a label right right and uh it's and maybe at that point maybe that was kind of the the goal but i quickly realized even though not to i'm not dogging the band or the industry as it was but it was quick, quickly obvious that well, this has nothing to do with why I play guitar and what I what I love about music. You know, it's cool that I'm in a band. We got we toured opening for Kiss and Alice Cooper and all these all these heroes, but when it got down to it, it was just just another large business. And I just wanted to be, I just wanted to be a great musician and and, and continue working on my craft. And mm -hmm. so after I had that experience, I just went back to Texas and started doing things very much my own way. 
the, the, the key was we had made a third record for Epic uh, that at the time got shelved, and then they basically made it impossible for us to get the rights back to the record. They wanted like 250 grand or something. I didn't have it on me at the time, so. Uh, <laughs> so this, this record went unreleased, and, we, and I thought, why would you ever work so hard on something and it not belong to you, mm. you know? Yeah. Now, now it's commonplace. Everybody makes their own records. You put it out on, you know, DistroKid or CD Baby or whatever it might be. But back then, you were kind of at the mercy because there wasn't YouTube and there wasn't all these uh, platforms for artists to get noticed. Um, but I just, I just kind of came back to Texas. You know, my tail between my legs, going, "Well, I'm just going to make the music I want to make, regardless of trend and and whatever musical fad was was happening. I just want to." play my guitar and so I started making my own records luckily I had a great engineer that was getting me into the studio for for you know inexpensively and uh just started getting my tunes out that way and it just kind of somehow I'm here <laughs> it's like it, yeah. I blinked and now it's you know 2022 and I'm still still doing it which I feel extremely blessed but it's a lot of hard work as you guys know to still be doing what we're all doing at this level uh it's 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 no I, I, you know, I once said when I was in my early part of my career, when somebody asked me how I got the gig with Danger Danger, I just off the cuff said, well, I just, I guess I got lucky. And the guy just immediately said, no, you didn't. You worked your ass off for years to be ready when you had the opportunity, you know, when it arose, right? So I say, I use the word fortunate now because extremely fortunate that, again, we're doing what we're doing. And that some, some people care about it, but it, right. uh, it takes a lot of work, man. It's not, I don't take anything ever for granted. I work, I practice every day. I'm always, you know, trying to keep up with whatever I can in, in this wacky, wacky business. But at the end of the day, I'm happiest when I'm just, in, just practicing and trying to get better, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I'm obviously writing music and, and then obviously we can release some music or get out and play live. Had a great gig this last week and I was in Seattle. My cousin, if anybody out there in Seattle, my cousin Jack Timmons has this chain of barbecue places called Jack's Barbecue. He, he's bo he was born That's and cool. raised in, born and raised in Dallas. So Robert, this might be a trip we yeah, need to make. I know, right? He's born and raised in in Dallas, but moved, moved to Seattle years ago. He was, uh, you know, uh, Microsoft for years and just got tired of that rigmarole. And I'm gonna open up a chain of barbecue restaurants, and that's what he did, right. which I actually didn't awesome. even know about. But he he was doing this. Uh, he was, putting on a music festival and i knew it when we were kids he was the biggest Jimi hendrix fan right it's like man you need to play some more hendrix I'm like all right cool but so hey i'm putting on this festival can you come up and play i got randy hansen is the headliner and do you guys know randy hansen I, yeah, he's I kind of a legendary guy who's been doing a hendrix tribute i think since the late 70s he's been around a while yeah so i was like man i can't wait i met him at, a, at the music mess maybe 20 years ago in frankfurt you know, really cool guy and really, really kind of looks a little like Jimmy from if you squint just right and played his butt off. So, man, we had the best gig. I just used a local rhythm section up there. My band couldn't make it for that particular gig. But seeing Randy play and man, he brought out the two, you know, double stack marshals and had the all the right gear. And I, I was so inspired watching him play because at first I thought, well, it might be a little sticky to see this guy get up and try to imitate Jimmy. But he wasn't, you know, playing like note for note like records. He was really channeling. It was it was really special to see. Mm -hmm. So again, just kind of just think it's just really nice to get out and play some gigs, you know. <laughs> and uh, yeah. if you get a chance to see uh, uh, see Randy Handsome man do it, I'd, I'd he and I ought to do the Randy and Andy tour. I'd I'd uh, <laughs> gladly do some shows with them because man, he really brought it in a very authentic way. Which you know, when you see tribute bands and stuff, it can be a little, you know. Not right. your favorite thing, but uh, this guy brought it. It was nothing. I yeah, I loved every bit of it. And then check out uh, Jack's barbecue. Jack's bar. If you are a carniv a carnivorous type, which <laughs> actually I'd I'd gone vegetarian for about four months before going up there, but now I'm a flexitarian because <laughs> <laughs> depending on how you feel, it is yeah. exactly. So today, you know, it, yeah, it's it was. I mean, <laughs> and I'm a t I mean, I live in Texas. I've had a, a bit of the barbecue, and this place I think it's even better. So. There's my there's wow. my ad there's my ad for Jack's barbecue in Seattle. Five, right. five locations open late. <laughs> Speaking of touring, I um yeah. I've got a question from Alex Nur. Uh it's his birthday today. Hey, uh, happy, birthday, happy birthday, Alex. All right. Um and uh, he wants to know when you'll be coming back to the Iridium and if you'll ever Ooh. be come, coming to Florida to play. That's a good question. So we had we had a lot of stops and starts. The, the Iridium is a very uh great 
it was called a jazz club, but it's a club in uh, in Manhattan. For those that don't know, where uh, Les Paul played for many years, um, and, and my band has been playing there regularly about twice twice a year since 2011. I think was the first time we played there. But yeah, with COVID, then and then we start. We we had three different dates booked with them, and then they had trouble reopening with all kinds of different. Uh, inspection issues and stuff i think they had some damage from the hurricane as well so mm -hmm. unfortunately we haven't rebooked yet but all, all this to say nothing planned but i would expect something either late this year or early next year we'll get back out there and hopefully some stuff in florida too cool tb yeah i saw les paul at the iridium yeah, yeah. i did too man i was yeah. very fortunate i had a front row oh, nice. uh yeah it was phenomenal and then <laughs> afterward i went back i brought my pick guard with me oh and, nice uh, and i had him sign it so fantastic I, I, it's on my Les Paul. Uh, oh, beautiful, man. How cool. Yeah, which is, cool. that was a great experience. He was really cool. He's a his, sweet... hand, his hands were so arthritic. Yeah, but uh, he could up... still play. It's yeah. amazing, right? That he was still able to to get around, you know, yeah. even even in his limited state, you know. I, I, I did see him maybe a, a handful of times. Even on his 90th birthday, they had a, a party for him at the Ryman. Still playing, and his wit was sharp to the end. Yeah, man. yeah. He's really, really funny guy. Were you at that was, Ryman gig? I can't believe it. Okay, the, the, one of the most outstanding features of that night for me was <laughs> all these players were coming out to to yeah. tribute less Tellies and Tellies and Tellies and Strats, <laughs> and this young woman named um, oh good lord, is it Chelsea? Chelsea. This way young woman is the only girl that came came out and played a Les Paul. And she sat in with Steve Morse playing. You know, I was like, maybe you might want to bring your Les Paul to the Les Paul 90th. You know, it was funny. yeah, right. Actually, <laughs> didn't want to get the name right. I think it's Chelsea Constable, but that's I think that's another good, another guitar player. I'm thinking of. Anyway, it yeah, was a fun he, night. He had this little talk for some. I don't know. He he was he was there at one of the event areas there at the Ryman, I guess, or halls or something yeah. like that. And he he was talking for a little bit, and it was the first time I'd ever met him, and uh, uh, it was his hysterical how how funny he was yeah and, and he, had a, he had, a, had a great dirty mouth <laughs> he just, he was, totally well if yeah, you saw one of any, any of his shows you know exactly yeah he was, it was he was working hysterical. blue he was working blue you know? yeah, yeah exactly yeah. i was i was thoroughly impressed <laughs> yeah. speaking of that olivia newton john i watched a video of her going up and playing with the les paul I just i just saw that in fact, I'd, I'd heard about it for, for years. Now, when, when Les passed, they, they continued on the, um, the tradition of having the Les Paul band play every Monday night, but they would invite guest guitar players to come, and I got to do that several times. So his guy, Lou Paolo, Lou and Nick, Nick, Nicky Parrott on bass, and I think Johnny Chops was the nickname that uh, Les had for the keyboard because <laughs> he was pretty choppy. You know, he was playing a lot. But I heard, I'd heard about it from Lou because he would tell me stories about Les, you know. And it wasn't always happy stories. Like he could be pretty, he could be pretty abrasive, right? Mm. But the way he told me the story is like, oh, Olivia Newton John, yeah, bring him up, right? Yes. <laughs> this, did he, I didn't see that part of the video. I did. I did watch. I, I forwarded to where she sings Rainbow, oh, which we, yeah. which she would sing every night with us, you know. So I thought she did a a a pretty admirable job, considering she was just there having having drinks with her with her man, you know. Yeah, yeah. We got well, called was... up. I felt bad for her because he did say, bring him up. Yeah. And then he's like, uh, it's a she. And he goes, uh, well, who is it? And then he's like, I thought it was Elton John that you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes to him. She, and again, talking about that grace, she goes, to him, you don't know who I am, but I know who you are. You know, right. it kind of turned it around like that. But watching that clip is again, even in, in, in his fairly limited state, he's voice leading his ass off. He's yeah. playing all these leading tones and I'm getting chills thinking about it. It's just this, in this, this very old school kind of Django way of, of navigating these changes. It's just stunning. And the fact that she, she got up there and without any warm up, just, just killed it like she did. Yeah. You but, guys should uh, check it out. Anybody in the audience. Yeah. Video of Olivia Newton, John and Les Paul at the Iridium. Oh, yeah, there's a lot cool. of great footage. There's a, one particular gig. I'm so glad it was filmed and recorded the way it was. We did a, a show sometime in the mid 2000s at the uh, Sydney Opera House with the Sydney Symphony, and uh, Elliot Shiner came out to record the audio, and it was very well uh, recorded, you know, video wise. So that's that's all over YouTube. There's a DVD available where you can see me uh, see me with Olivia back in the day, <laughs> having wow. a good time. Fantastic. A lot of that out there. Uh, Rummy. Rummy. It's got a question for Dave Ooh. about wall voltage. 
Aha. Uh, Dave, Aha. my wall voltage moves between 120 to 125. I bought the brown box and find 117 the most to be the most pleasing. Do I have to rebuy us? I say no. No, you, you'll be fine. Uh, 117 is kind of cool. Just a little under 120 is kind of nice. Yeah. Uh, Robert, I love your take on the blues driver. What was your approach? Well, my, my approach back then was kind of a lot more naive. And so I just wanted to make it the best blues driver I possibly could. Uh, and I wanted to address some of the complaints I saw or on the tone uh, from players on Harmony Central way back then. So I, I, I put in uh, the, the best ca capacitors I could find at the time. And uh, uh, so there's a lot of those blues drivers that have silver mica caps in there and all kinds of fun stuff. And um, I, I, I tried to move around the tone control a little bit uh, so that it wasn't quite as sharp or peaky and uh, those type of things. Not, not a lot was done. That little uh, fat switch was for some of the Telecaster players that wanted a little bit more beef in the sound, so it added a little bit of low end to it. But it was it was really just about trying to make it as good sounding as, as I could. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Waterford Giant. Nice. Thumbs up. All right, Thank we'll you. take it uh, if there's no question. Um, and let's see where else I thought there was another question right here. Uh, session with Jeff. Andy, if you have to use backline amps, do you just run straight into the front in stereo or do you try and use the loop even if it's a pair of twins or similar? Yeah, with twins, obviously, you're going to be running into the front. And that's fine. I like, again, with this particular setup where I'm, I'm kind of gearing mainly going into the front of the Lone Star, that's in my benefit if I'm in that position where I got to use, uh, use backline stuff. Um, yeah, but I, I do I do love the sound of uh, usually any uh, time based effects in the effects loop if I have that option. But if not, yeah, I can get away with it. You know, I'm dying to try. I, I'm dying to gain up a Marshall and put this halo in front of it. <laughs> yeah. per, per Dave's uh, yeah, just, experience, it's yeah, freaking right. great, man. Yeah. Secondary function saturation on tap. Gonna get it. I'm gonna get in it. That's that's my next move for sure. And then play with the tone a little bit. And... Yeah. Okay. Do we we spent a lot of time when we were developing the the halo in front of uh, a couple yes. amplifiers that were completely maxed out, gained out, so we could track down these mm -hmm. little teeny nuanced sounds that randomly appeared in there. So, yeah. you know, we spent a lot of time in front of, yeah. of, of, of a gained up amplifier. So I, I, I know that contributed to why it probably worked so well, yeah. because we made a lot of adjustments in that kind of area. Hmm. So Awesome, man. Is that is that unusual to do that, or is that? Oh, I mean, yeah, especially that much time and effort in it because we we were tracking down again. There was little no, teeny nuances in in the sound and like how much was the pitch shifting, you know, on the third repeat. <laughs> so, oh, really? Wow. Yeah. No. So. Yeah, I, I was. It was you know I, dealing with people's pedal boards and rigs for years. I've always uh, found that a lot of people that just wind up playing their pedal board into clean amps don't really know that their pedal board's really noisy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> you're not hearing it. Mm -hmm. Now, take that pedal board, put it into a dirty amp, and all of a sudden it's like, ah. It's oh, right. yeah. damn right. Yeah. Exactly. You got all sorts of problems with yeah. your board, okay? <laughs> so when, when you test stuff like that, you need to test it into dirty amp. Because you, 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 it'll amplify any little noise that's there. And if you get it quiet that way, then it's, you're great. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I second wow. that notion. That yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Great tip. Uh, Mr. Anderson, thank you. Uh, hey guys, Andy, Andy, although I'm a Marshall guy, you were the reason I bought two Mesa Lone oh, Star wow. heads, classic and special great yeah. amps. By the way, that Fawn Tolex late seventies Marshall looks great. Is it a 2203 or 2204? I think oh. we said it was a 2203, right? Yep. I, yeah, I don't, I just know it as a JMP. But, um, yeah. JMP. It's a 2203. That's the model number. Of there it. you go. And 2204 is a hundred, uh, 50 watt version. Oh, okay. There you go. See, I hang out with smart people. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I hope you dig those uh, maces. Uh, yeah. I love Marshalls too. I love just, I love all kinds of stuff. What was the story on the uh, Fawn Tolex? They, they only came out on for a short period of time, right? 
uh, from Marshalls. I yeah, 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 I mean, really yeah sure. it was mostly you mostly saw it around that era of his amp, uh, so it was mostly, um, and then it kind of went away. Yeah, yeah. So I don't really know. I don't really I, really sad. When I found this amp. Um, it was I was in Toronto on tour with Olivia, and then we had a day off. And there, Queen Street at the time, maybe it still does, but there was a lot of great guitar shops on Queen Street. And I don't know if it was Songbird. I think it was called Songbird. I don't think they're there anymore. But it had the matching cabinet. But I was on the road, and I couldn't take the cabinet with me. I really regret not buying the matching cabinet. Yeah, know? that would have been nice. To it would have been well, handy. So now, to now you have to go find one. Yeah, you know, out there. Could, could be that that they must there must be a few yeah. out there. Somewhere. So you just get a you know a matching half stack. Just, that would be just because it's, it's so cute. <laughs> It'd be nice. Yeah, yeah. That was a cool thing about Randy Hansen. He had the double Marshall stacks, but one once one side of it, one half of it was all purple, and he had this great purple Hendrixy outfit and the purple hat mm -hmm. and a purple coily cable. I was like, all right, this guy's got it going on. <laughs> He's smiling. One, one of the cool moments was. At some point, you know, he's playing a lefty strat upside down righty, so it still had the same kind of vibe of Jimmy, even though he's playing right-handed. But at one point, he had, the cable was kind of bad. There was a bad connection. Even that sounded authentic. It sounded like this, yeah. that sounds just like when Jimmy had a bad cable. <laughs> <laughs> Looking great, you know. I was that was I was all into it. You know? That's great. <laughs> yeah. uh. Uh, Shotgun Rebels, thank you. Hey. Love my Keeley Fuzzbender. Great Fuzzbender. Fuzz yes, thank it is. You. The Fuzzbender is uh, a tone bender with an active EQ after it. Oh, I nice. wanted I wanted a way to spice up the bass and the treble, and you can't do it in a passive way. So we put an active EQ after it, and then Creighton, who, who designs all our circuit boards, um, he came up with this. Uh, clever way of having that gate control so we could get a sputtery type of fuzz sound but we didn't we wouldn't have as many volume issues when you engage that feature so mm. the fuzz bender is pretty cool it gives you a, a really you know excited fuzz sound where you have more control over the bass and treble than you would normally have mm. and then it's got that kind of jack white or whatever right. flatty fuzz sound that's really fun yeah dave loves that Mm -hmm. Is that your favorite sound? Broken, broken fun, fuzz. Broken, broken, broken sounding fuzzes. The ones that sound really broken. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like that. Yeah. They're fun. Uh, psionic audio. Thank you. Uh, hey guys, thanks for doing these shows. Really cuts through a lot of the forum clutter. It's good right. for everyone. Oh well, Lyle. We want you to come on the show. So I'm officially asking you. So now hey. you have to get back to me. Yeah, oh, email email Dave, <laughs> or you can email me tone talk mark at gmail dot com. You can say I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you said you said actually in the chat. He goes, but my whole shtick is not showing my face. We could just put your company logo in the in the uh, in the spot, and you can just be a voice. <laughs> yeah, I could do. That. I actually could do that. <laughs> be a little boring though. <laughs> uh modern vintage dave if you made a custom one-off amp based on a be circuit with cost production parts reliability not being concerned only using the best parts what would be different than what's in a 100 deluxe i don't think much of anything because i i mean <clears throat> uh you i don't know what i would use different i already use really good parts um Maybe maybe pots. I could I could use the you know twenty dollar a pot, you know yeah. pot. I can use the PEC pots, which are anywhere from fifteen to twenty dollars per pot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and how what's the Crazy. just it won't sound any long, different. It'll last longer. That's basically it's not going to sound. Maybe <laughs> that's maybe questionable. Yeah. Okay. But um, I mean, they're made. They're nice, beautiful pods. But um, that was the. That's the only thing I think I would do. I think I've been wanting to do that on the amp, <laughs> just because. Yeah, why not? But it won't change the sound. No. Mm. Okay. Um, I heard. Yeah, someone just wrote uh, music therapy. Laz. Back in the U.S. after a visit to Henning's 42 Gear Street, 
Oh, fun, fun. Having some palinka from Hungary. Apricot brandy flavored rocket fuel. <laughs> okay. I'm just bragging, man. What the yeah. <laughs> Where's ours? Save us some. Yeah, I got two. Like I got tuna salad waiting. You know, <laughs> apricot brandy with the tuna salad. Yeah, yeah, yeah yum, a tasty combo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, I hope you had fun at uh, Forty Two Gear Street. Yeah, um, that's a fun hang. Yeah, he's, there, he's I, a... I I did a video once where we taped Henning to a chair. <laughs> nice. I saw that. I wa I have that a constant completely duct taped him to a chair and then spun him around and spun yeah <laughs> <laughs> we put his coffee cup just out of reach where he couldn't reach it <laughs> that's too funny uh ted fur thank you uh hey andy i was wondering if you could play something on the halo rackman default setting uh. that setting forced my hand to buy a halo well it's uh rock man uh, that right s s s p minus one So the rock band setting he's he's mentioning is a it's another it's another uh, multi tap on the halo that as we were looking at other other um, things that we could add to it in addition to my normal dotted eighth quarter, Robert was asking, well, what other echo multi taps might you like? And one was that we went after was like the the shadows Miazzi tape echo, the Hank Marvin thing. But this then I had this old um, one of the rack mount rock man units, the Tom Scholz unit. And in his subdivision was 300 versus 500 in varying degrees of, you know, wherever we move the slider, but it's a different kind of feel to it, right? Tom Schultz ever used it in Octavia, but I was just in the mood. So it's just a different rhythm. You know, not really changing much besides the rhythm. It's just pretty much still the halo essence with how we're doing the, uh, the modulation and such. If you play some Boston Licks, you can just pretend, you know. Man, I that that's a guy. Let's, can you get Tom Scholes to come on your show, guys? Because that'd be great. Wouldn't oh, that be fun to, to. to open yeah. up that guy's head a little bit? Because he's oh, just yeah. never seemed to have really addressed how the hell he did what he did. Talking pre Rockman, but that first record, you know, and into Don't Look Back, still some of the greatest guitar sounds and performances, and mm -hmm. you know, he's just never really. We kind of know ish, right? But man. Come on, Tom. I wish see. he would. I wish he would come out and surf, you know, yeah. and do some interviews. And yeah, I, I mean, it's such a big fan. I, I did go to see him. I, I saw him on the Don't Look, Don't Look Back tour back in '78, and it was monumental. You know, blew my mind, my little teenage mind. But then, uh, you know, seeing him in the last ten years or so, it, it, the the whole mix actually did sound like it was being mixed on a Rockman. Sorry, Tom. You know, but it it was it, even the drum sounded like. They, they had all that same kind of processing on it but mm. so uh but still great because it was him playing guitar and i'm a huge i'm a huge fan mm. but there's something about pre you know all the all the stuff that he invented which was just legendary iconic stuff that like i say that was my rig back in the day a rockman through an amp you know yeah uh but man th those records still hold up in, in a huge way oh, i can listen to boston first <laughs> it's album just, it's just incredible man i mean i used to just like i uh, was yeah. grew up in high school down here and it was yeah. like going to the beach boston you yeah know, it was, we still <laughs> that that phrase on the back of of the record that said better music through technology so we were all like okay this has all been invented by computers and it's this all f trickery you know not really knowing what the heck that meant but yeah what right. a brilliant brilliant guy and just an incredible really kind of underrated 
as the musician that he is. That's him playing the B3 stuff on, you know, four play long time. It's just, his chops are incredible, man. Just great <laughs> soulful bending, you know, just, just magic. Just magic. And Brad Delp, what a singer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. He had his perfect, his perfect singer, didn't he? You know? Yeah. Because isn't it Tom playing all the instruments on those tracks, on that, that first record particularly? Like, I'm he, not sure about drums, but I maybe. Maybe not direct, drums, okay. Yeah. Even got the impression it could have been that. But yeah, it makes sense that he could one man bandish kind of thing, but yeah. Maybe. Still holds up and still miraculous. So come on. So yeah, Tom, Tom if you're listening, come on. <laughs> I'm sad. And you know he is. Yeah. He's right. keeping up. Knows, Tom? He's <laughs> keeping up with the kids. What are yeah. those kids what are those kids up to? <laughs> uh Modern Vintage with another question. Uh did you guys see the Gibson collection video with Slash that came out yesterday? Mm -hmm. I did watch part of it. Uh, I almost got in the back. it. <laughs> oh, you almost clicked. So your rig is in the back, Dave? I don't, I don't know. I didn't watch, watch it. No. <laughs> yeah, I just. I, I, at least. I I, I got to finish watching it. That's one of those things. Like I want to throw it on the big screen TV. Like I always watch it on my phone, and I'm like, you know what? I, yeah. I should throw it on the TV. Um, but that's cool. Uh, how you guys doing on time? We got. I know we have. A questions i got tuna waiting man whatever <laughs> <laughs> it's, in the refrigerator. it's in the fridge i think i think i can wait yeah it's okay. better it's better when it's more chilled so you know. yeah uh christian daniel hey guys robert can you talk about what your goal was behind the supro keely amps design that that was something that came out a few years back and uh i think dave Coltai and i just really enjoyed working with each other and uh, he made me a custom uh, Supro amp for a, uh, a NAM show, and he put the Keeley logo on it, and it, for some reason, just looked great like that. And I, I tell you, there there wasn't. He sent me several samples, and I enjoyed what him and I guess Bruce Zinke were doing, and the other guy that was involved in in his part of, of finishing up the design, but. I really just kind of liked what they did. The effects loop worked just perfectly fine, and I hadn't, I hadn't used a lot. I hadn't used effects loops a lot. I actually plug in more into the front of the amplifiers myself, and so uh, that that's that's really about the extent of it. It wasn't it wasn't a lot except for a good friendship between Dave Coltai and myself, you know. And we liked the way it looked, <laughs> and and it made sense uh, that I could have a a pedal friendly format amplifier um, that was set up for that. And instead of having reverb or tremolo in it, like it might normally have, you know, mm -hmm. so um, I, I, I really uh, had, a, had a lot of fun just working with Dave because he's a crazy guy. Yes, yeah. he is. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Modern Vintage again. Thanks, man. Uh, Robert, Thank what you. is it about the Katana V1 that makes it truly the best? No matter what amp, it just makes it better and beautiful. That feel, the, the feel is amazing. Well, there's probably... It comes with both of my licks, like Andy said. <laughs> it comes out... It, one of it is my little capacitor trick to, uh, you know, round off some of the annoying highs and uh, making sure the distortion is properly even ordered i don't know you know something like that the three quarters power law something about that in into the distortion um so but thank you it's it's just i, I think it's just a pleasing sound because of the way jfets distort and uh, i rolled off some of the highs and i didn't allow too much space to come through and it makes for a great preamp you know <laughs> cool. it, it, it's 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 is that the same? Is that the same one that's on the workstation also? The it Katana? is very similar, but it, it probably is not identical. No, that circuit would be a little bit different. It's it's a clean boost and it does have JFETs in it, but I don't think it has the voltage doubling. Mm. So that, that workstation one is a little bit different. The mini mm. one is a little bit different, but pretty much all the big box ones, almost all the big box ones are the same. Gotcha. The way we make it now is the same as, as D1. We went back to the very first original days. I'll have to grab one. Cool. Uh, Alex B. Andy, how did you like the Mesa, the Mesa Triple Crown? Do you use one yourself, Dave? <coughs> have you come across one yet? 
I I had one for a little bit. Um, you know, I, I, my, my um, relationship with Mesa is lengthy. You know, it goes back to the early '90s, and uh, you know, I, I resonate with some of their amps, not all of them. I use their um, remember the the Maverick, the uh, EL8 EL84 mm-hmm. cool, amp, all the Maverick. In my first couple of tours with Olivia, that was kind of the the perfect amp because I you know. Little chimey single coil with the compression in front of these, you know, EL84 amps that sounded really nice. But when the Lone Star came around, that was the first one that I really full on board, like this is really working for me. Um, the Triple Crown just didn't quite have what I was liking out of the Lone Star, so it didn't last that long for me. But uh, it's, it's a great head. I know that I've got friends that use it that, that love it, but it just wasn't for me. Okay. Yeah. I've never been around one in person to answer the second half of that. So. Yeah, okay. Christopher Crooms, thank you. Hey guys, great show tonight. Andy, you get great single coil tones from your Ibanez SIG. Uh, uh, impressed you. at the tone and didn't expect that from dual blade pickups. Can you talk about the pickups and the guitar with examples? Yeah, so it's, um, they are humbuckers, but they're kind of voiced like a single coil. That's- They're a little beefier, and this—it it was kind of a happy ask, accident for me when this guitar, this pro, this is a prototype from 1994 that Ivan has built for me that ended up being my signature guitar. Um, originally had a um, a Seymour Duncan Jeff Beck in it, and these two Demarzio Cruisers. And it was just literally on the recommendation of a guy that I was working with named Bill Comiskey at uh, uh, one of the higher ups at Ivan has. Yeah, just try these pickups. Okay, great, I'll try them. And I because I thought it matched nicely with the Bucker if I was going in between sounds. Um, and just kind of stuck. I love a vintage single coil tone, but of course these are a little quieter and a little a little hotter maybe. So, but I could still get a. Still get a bit of that chew. After many years, that, well, now the, the the pickup that's in the bridge now is a is a custom bucker they make for me that Steve Blue, Steve Blucher designed called the AT1, and I finally put a tap on that, which I didn't think was going to sound good, but after 20, 20 years or so, I thought, well, I'm gonna try it. So some of that jangly. There's the bucker tapped. Made me think about uh, the Pete Townsend earlier. Yeah, so. yeah. Some wow. of the best guitar playing ever. That guy. Oh my god. Oh yeah. The, his his rhythm playing is just <laughs> immense. It's just crazy <laughs> it's, good. It's insane. That yeah. live at Leeds record. So when would he have had the Dynacomp? Because when when was that pedal invented? Uh, there. You know what? I ran into this. Oh, the script Dynacomps were yeah late. Uh, uh, late seventies, I think. Okay, I think late seventies. Yeah, I was gonna say so. Not so. Light Leeds was what sixty nine seventy. Yeah, it wouldn't be there. It was. I think so it was those... a phone bender originally boosting. Yes, I think you're right. And and then later it went to the mm-hmm. Dynacom. But that thing about the the live at Leeds, there was some kind of tape echo being uh being put on the tone at the at the mixing board because mm-hmm. you can hear him when he backs down the gain and it, it's got a little bit of that. You know the modulation with those out of tune repeats. It's, that's one of those early documented versions of mm. what we're doing here. You know, it's, yeah. it's really beautiful. And of course, he's kind of bending the neck around too to to kind of help get it into that that space. But God, there's some beautiful tones on that record. So magic, right? Ah, very good, uh, Pete. David 
Brochi, uh, Robert, what do you attribute to Oklahoma becoming the pedal capital of the universe? <laughs> yeah. Goodness. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I try to make it a fun place to, to work, and um, I've been inspired. I've met some great people and inspired people that this pedal business is a great place for guitar players that are out of work. <laughs> so um, <laughs> that's that's what it is. Uh, yeah. There's there's not a, maybe a lot of things to do in Oklahoma. So when the notion of pedals comes up and getting a job doing pedals, that sounds like you should put your time and effort into it. So I think we, we've got a lot of great musicians and and uh, I, I, I'm not uh, I, I like sharing how I've done it and how I think about things. And I think that inspires other people to go, heck yeah, I can do that. I can put those sounds into a box and market it. And, you know, I, I can see how I can steer the sound of a, a pedal uh, or an electronic circuit. And um, it's fun making pedals. So, <laughs> How many employees do you have now? We have 35. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I enjoy it. So. That's great. Incredible. Uh, Andy, any plans in the future to play with Simon Phillips again? You know, not, not on the calendar at the moment, but I would, I would say that will likely happen. You know, uh, so, so much respect for Simon, you know, as a incredible writer and obviously a great, <clears throat> great musician. So we, we, we truly enjoy working together. So I would say there's good potential for that depending on schedules and, you know, yeah, he's crafty. That Simon. Yeah, he's great. Uh, <laughs> great player. Learned a lot um, from him. Yeah, Michael Manchisi. Thank you, All right, uh, Michael. All right, man. My Andy, St. Watch... Louis in the house. Ah, you know Michael? Yeah, I do. I, we've uh, I did a house party for him. Right? He's a good. Got a, he's a guitar player up in St. Louis, and uh, yeah, we cool. uh, had some good times together. Very cool. He said he watched the Sydney DVD with Olivia oh, and John. Yeah. Reminded me how good that catalog of material was. Your line six solo on Magic is still all you. Uh, hoping for stage it when the time is right. <laughs> he had to bring that up. Yeah, there was there was yeah there was times when I was using a pod on that gig when we were working with the orchestras, you know, because uh, volume was such a, an issue and I'm traveling, of course. So I would beat the heck out of my guitar, getting tone out of a pod sometimes. Not always. Like I said, those early <laughs> tours, I had my my Mavericks, etc. But anyway, yeah. good to see you, Michael. And I'll be back on stage it soon, absolutely. Maybe maybe next weekend. We'll see. Yeah. Stage is the platform that I use when I'm doing my uh, live stream gigs. Oh, is that? Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the, that's the the live stream platform? Exactly, yeah. Um, uh, yes, yeah, stageit.com. So you, I, like during the pandemic, I did two shows every Saturday um, from the very beginning of, of the pandemic. I saw a buddy of mine. There's a band called Bowling for Soup. If you've ever uh -huh. heard of these guys, yeah, kind of yeah. a really nice yeah. power pop rock band. And then they're actually from this area. And I know the singer a little bit. And I saw him posting on Facebook, hey, catch me on stage at 2 p.m. U.S., 8 p.m. U.K. You know, I'm like, oh, great. He's doing two shows. Of course, that was just the time difference. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I got it in my mind. We're doing two shows every Saturday. That's what I'm going to do. So I got a hold of him. So, hey, man, teach me about how you're doing these live stream gigs. Hook me up with the, the company. So he did. He gave me some pointers. And for, very fortunately for me, my longtime recording engineer lives two doors down from me, Rob Wexler, who's he's handy with all things, you know, computer and, uh, and audio. So kind of figured out a system for me and then i just again i just had it in my head i'm going to do two shows every saturday and it worked out great because i had i had a gig to look forward to every every weekend and uh yeah i had work <laughs> cool. that's great yeah, that's awesome. yeah, yeah. Uh, eric johnson uh says hey, a, free, a freeman would look good in that fawn tolax <laughs> <laughs> EJ, EJ, ej in the house yeah you can't get it you can't get it that fawn color you can't get Wow. You can get other things that are kind of somewhat close, but it's not this it's not right. Interesting. Hmm. They could put a man on the moon. <laughs> we can't get fond to it. Hey, there that. you go. Lyle answered. All right, he's on he's in. All right. Speaking of that, I hear we're I guess going you gotta back show to your the moon. Face, Lyle. We're going back to the moon, I heard. Are we really? I heard yeah. something about that. Yeah, our, Project Artemis. Is hmm. it is it Space Force? 
Uh, I think it's NASA. <laughs> too, too soon? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Steve, Steve Carell's in there somewhere. I don't know. Okay. Uh, the Fuzzy Monsters, thanks. Robert, tell us about the Time Machine Boost and the George Lynch edition. Ooh. Yeah, that, when that pedal came out, uh, David Zabatos and I uh, had a partnership, and David is out there in California, and he had struck up a friendship with uh, several people, including George Lynch, and George was getting into vintage equipment, or and uh, that Time Machine Boost, is essentially would it the, be this oh look at that <laughs> wow just Goodness, so happened to have in my back pocket that's that's a well <laughs> so when, when I, I was reading i was reading in the chat that some something uh, said something about this and i'm like oh that's what he got wait a minute okay. i have pete thorne sitting on my desk it's pete's <laughs> yeah and wow. because, because the switch is funky i gotta change the switch but um oh. but yeah that, so that that, that, that that's is, what we're talking about here those those are really cool because if you take you look at the inside circuit, it's all point to point wired. And mm. uh, those are really cool pedals. And it's just a Dallas range master, a treble booster. Oh, and, man. um, that's, that's where the, the idea of the Katana, um, first was implemented inside that time machine boost, that modern boost. Uh, I took apart and, and called it the Katana when I released it under my own brand, Keely electronics. So that's actually the first place you see the katana circuit. Wow. Yeah, and George wow. Lynch, George Lynch was was really getting into, uh, I guess, a bunch of Marshalls, as I recall it, and the sound of of a treble booster pushing wow. those amplifiers is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. And so wow. he, uh, I think we made some changes where I just uh, changed the little input cap on on his version of the treble booster. Um, and then, then David Zabatos had designed the uh, the killer graphics for that George Lynch one with all the little teeny skulls everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we did those. There, on, on certain occasions, I think we even color coded the wiring. Like for a Halloween edition, we did like brown, yellow, and orange, or something like that. You know, <laughs> and Fourth of July we had red, white, and blue wiring. And so, oh, that's there's, cool. There's, there's all kinds of fun stuff with those early time machine boots. You know. That's awesome. Very yeah. Cool. Uh, Stephen Massey, Dave, are you still working on a Richard Fortas amp? He mentioned something a while back. Uh, yeah, that'll probably be a limited a limited run of that um, McMars Jose that he sold. Mm -hmm. So yes, if I can get around to it, I mean, it's it's this has been like production problems and things and this and that. It's just um it's hard yeah well count me in on that one it's for a, a jose modern Mar, mini marshall mm. oh it's not mini it's a it's a hundred watt oh it's gonna be a hundred <laughs> watt yeah. oh okay yeah there's nothing hey. mini about it all right then forget <laughs> it forget it <laughs> thank you for 100 watts i'm a 100 watt it has to be yeah sean sean, sean. dude you could have just texted me you didn't have to pay. <laughs> Uh, Andy, I truly appreciate you, man. I've got a lot of da demons and dragons that chase me as a guitar player, and mm. every time I see and hear you play, you make me smile. Oh, truly man. inspiring. Well, we all have demons and dragons and all kinds of things chasing us, don't we? But uh, well, that's I'm humbled by that, and it means a lot to me, brother. Thank you so much. We're all in it together. We're keeping each other going, right? No doubt. If, if I add anything to that, I'm I'm very uh, very happy to hear that. I'm very humbled. Thank you, man. And Sean, you're an amazing player. Heck yeah. yeah. Absolutely absolutely amazing player. So uh keep up the great work. Um Modern Vintage, thank you again. Dude, you are on yeah. fire tonight. <laughs> yeah, you are. Dave, I have a second B E one hundred deluxe I want to run sixty five fifties in. Which sixty five fifties do you like best for the amp and what should the bias be? I think the real going. question it will, will be is what can sixty five fifties can you get? <laughs> Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, the only ones I put in the amp before were KT88s, Electro Harmonics KT88s, which are basically a sixty-five fifty derivative. Um, so they're the only ones I've actually heard in that amp. Now I would like to say if you could get your hands on a set of old GE sixty-five fifties, 
good luck. Might not get those, and they might be really expensive. Um, of course, anything 60 or 50 is really expensive right now. Um, uh, those would be the ultimate uh, if you can find a good set still, but I don't know if you can. Hmm. Okay. Uh, guitar for a cure. Ah. What's up, Peter? Pete Gizmodo. Yeah, what's up, Pete? Uh, Andy, love the uh, Danger Danger reunion show, I guess, Long Island, I guess. Uh, you did a yeah, few we did. We did a warm up show in Long Island before going to Japan for some gigs. Yeah. Incredible show, he says. Any chance that performance will see the light of day? Oh, I, I don't know that it was recorded. Mm. Um, I would think it's on YouTube <laughs> the way things go these days. I have, I have no idea, to be honest. How many um, years ago was it? Ah, that's a good Peter. Maybe he would remember what, what year it was. Again, my chronology is horrible, but maybe, maybe six, seven years ago. Um, we did a handful of shows. There was a, a, a festival, an annual festival called Firefest that was going on in Birmingham, England. And they were going to do the last year. They, they basically got all the 80s bands to come over and do shows and do, do, do these festivals. And uh, they were the first people to come and say, hey, would, you, would, would the original band reunite, you know, all five original members? And Because we hadn't done any shows since 1992. And so, again, this would have been sometime in the early 2010s, I suppose, at some point. And, and it, it, enough time had passed. We were all like, yeah, let's, let's do this, you know. And it was a lot of fun. It really was because I hadn't. We I've been in touch with the guys, you know, basically. But and there's a, obviously anytime you're in a band that's together and touring, it's a pretty intense thing, and uh, you bond in a very in a very deep way, obviously. So it was great to get back together and do do those tunes. And and the, the actual festival in Birmingham was a huge success. And then we did three shows uh, in Japan, I think it was. Uh, but I don't know if there's any any recordings out there available. There must be some, you know. I'm sure, there's YouTube stuff. There must be at some point, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not usually typing in "danger, danger" when I'm doing my searches, but it could be, it could be out there. <laughs> but I'm glad, I'm glad you dug it, Peter. Good, yeah, to, good to see you on here, man. Thanks, Peter. Yeah. Uh, Kenny Shipman says, uh, "Dave, any plan to sell a four by twelve slant cab? Man, those non-caster straight cabs sound amazing, just heavy as hell." Do you really uh, think this land cab is going to be much less weight? I was going to say, what, I mean, you're what, only what are we cutting off. Down? It's all the same wood. You're only shaving off like maybe a handful of wood. Uh, so I don't really think. <laughs> I think it's going to weigh the same amount. So, uh, Stephen Massey, thanks again. Andy, do you got any new pedals coming from JHS? I got no new pedals coming from JHS. But like I say, maybe we may do a version three of the of the of the at. People call it the at pedal, which makes sense because it's the at sign. But it's it's the at pedal. Um, uh, no, nothing in the works. I know Josh has been, <laughs> he's a busy guy, but uh, yeah, maybe, maybe somewhere down the road. We'll see. I know Robert and I have some, some things we'd like to work on. So uh, it is fun. What, what I like working with Andy the, the most is it's not only the humor, which is first rate, but, uh, <laughs> but actually it, 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 it requires us to stretch as a team to try to get the skills needed to build those sounds that he wants to hear. So, it, it, it's been so rewarding because it pushes us so hard to to make better sounding circuits. So yeah, hmm. working yeah. with Andy has been a blessing. <laughs> well, you didn't you didn't need oh. much help, but I'm I'm no. just happy to have you on board with me. Well, you gotta have you gotta have somebody call him the shot. <laughs> that doesn't sound good enough. <laughs> <laughs> we got the you guys. You went the you went the distance, man. That's for darn sure. <laughs> oh, that's great. I got a question yeah. for Dave. Dave, uh -oh. I heard something about, and this might be nothing, but I heard that Western Electric, the people that make that 300B, yeah. were, were, were threatening to make uh, 6L6s. Has, has anything ever surfaced more about that story? Uh, they were threatening to make, yeah, guitar-related <laughs> tubes, but we have not seen that <laughs> at all yet. And uh, probably, if we do, we won't see it for years. Right. Um, I would say. Idle current um, threat. Huh. Idle, yeah. idle current threats. Uh -huh. Darn, that would be so cool to have an American 6L6 again. It would. That would if be great. It'll yeah. be expensive. How much are they going to be? You know, that's the question. Expensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if they sound really good. It's $200 a tube. Ooh. No. Come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. I know. Uh, that's the problem. I wouldn't doubt it. Uh, 
Dave Doherty, thank you. Hey, Andy, can you talk about the AT1 pickup? Heard it was based on a JB. Curious if that was the case and what sonic changes did you make to it? Yeah, it's exactly. That was that was the the starting point for sure because that's what was originally in the guitar. And I like that pickup. Um, Steve Blucher just did some tweaks to it. I think um, beefed up the low end maybe a little bit and maybe, um, I don't know how to use these words, but yeah, sweeten, sweeten the top a little bit. Uh, but that's about the, 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 you have to talk to Steve Blucher to see what exactly that he did. But I ended up liking it more than uh, that original JB, which is handy, obviously. Um, but that's all the info I have. But it did, it really did start off as, as the JB for sure. That was the starting point. So is it hotter than a JB or is it? Uh... Definitely not. No, Definitely okay. not. No, I wasn't going for anything hotter necessarily. Uh, yeah. Just uh, just trying to sweeten the tone the, the best I could. But mm -hmm. yeah, none of these pickups are, are that hot, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I guess DeMarzio did kind of get started off as the Distortion Plus guy, you know, and then the hotter the better. But I tend to like stuff that's not quite as, as uh, brutal like that. Right. Uh, Eric Johnson. Uh, by the way, I love your music, Eric. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, the local guitar shop is selling pedals called the Keeley Moon Fuzz. Is it a take on another pedal, or like what is it? Yeah, it's it's our take on on an op amp fuzz circuit, and uh, we Creighton and I had a notion that we could um, really really exaggerate the low end response. If we if we made a change to the circuit and added a capacitor in, in the in the feedback loop, and it worked so well, it was it was it was comical how how much response was there, unlike any other muff I had heard. <laughs> so so we we had a field day with it, and we I, I debated. I went back and forth for a long time, going ah, this is just not correct. This is a lot, <laughs> you know, and so. It's it's based on an op amp uh, fuzz and and uh, but it has our own twist in it and uh, there's there's quite a few other things that are different but the the bass response is out of this world and it's a, a way that I had never done it before I usually I just tried to make sure there was you know capa big enough capacitors in the in the direct signal path but putting this cap in the feedback loop. Uh, opened it up for a very exaggerated sound. It kind of sneaks around the diodes and doesn't get as clipped, so you have this very forceful bass response. Oh, and yeah, cool. It's, it's kind of hysterical. Yeah, it's really <laughs> bombastic. It's, does it, does it work that's good a good bass? commercial right there. I want one. Does it work good on bass? Yeah. I, I think so. There's There's been some people that do some bass demos. It's it's kind of, it, it, it's an exaggerated sound. It's definitely doomy. So, <laughs> you, it, it's got frequency response well below 20 hertz. <laughs> Let's put it that way. There it's silly. Wow. Uh, Dalton Boundreau, thank you. For Dave, what's the main difference in the old SS head versus the new one? Uh, a slight change on the front end that makes it just a smidge more aggressive and percussive. And then you added a second gain and master for the lead channel which it never had and a system volume which it never had hmm. so um all nice features kind of more of the deluxe feature set that i have in the b deluxe amp hmm. sounds, it sounds amazing um geeseberry at1 is a fabulous pickup i have a few of them more focus than a jb a hmm. jb with less slop <laughs> yes <laughs> Depending on how you're playing that day, I don't know about you, but uh, <laughs> no, right. Well, I'm true. glad you, I'm glad you dig it. I, it's I've been obviously very fond of it, and it's been working well for me. If you dig it too, I'm very happy. Awesome, uh, Christopher Butler. Hey, Andy, how's it feel to be the first guest on that pedal show to bring a dab to actually bring dab oh, to Dan, Dan, yeah. Dan to actual <laughs> tears? <laughs> I found that after I saw John Cordy do a video inspired by what you played that that did oh. it beautiful. I don't know John Cordy. I have to I have to check that out. Yeah, we were. It was an interesting day because we had done three shows together. They have a band that pedal show band, and they brought me over as a guest, and we did some concerts together. And then we were going to film an episode. But Dan and I, who have been very good friends, but we only ever see each other at Nam or. There's a couple of bits where he's come out on, on a tour to fix a pedal board or something, but we'd never really been in a room to tone quest, 
you know, and obviously at, at their facility there, they've got all these amps and stuff. And I had uh, actually Mick owned two Lone Star combos. So that's what I was using on the tour. And he put this uh, very, very hastily made uh, pedal board together with my main elements on it. But we thought, well, let's just experiment around. We had like 30 minutes before we were going to start filming. And we were going to try some different speakers. And he put me through um, some of his things he was using. But Mick had had this, he had this um, vertical Mesa 212. Remember with the uh, the metal grill that they used to have in the 80s? Uh -huh. Those Mesa caps? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So we had one of those, but had the two old uh, EVM, speak, you know, EV speakers in it. The two, are they 100 watt or 200 watt speakers? Yeah. And so we plugged you know out of the out of the lone star heads into those speakers and i'm again i'm in, i'm normally running vintage 30s in my rectifier 212s that's what i've just kind of geared my tone around but man we put uh, the lone stars into those speakers and but we looked at, i just played a chord we looked at each other and we we both kind of welled up like it was a thing <laughs> it was just, <laughs> this really beautiful warmth and detail was incredible and so we decided well let's mic that up and we started to do the show and I was, you know, they were, it was, it was kind of halo centric because that was the pedal that had just come out, but we were going through all the stuff in my board and I ended up just playing this little, uh, a solo piece that I'd written, you know, and again, it's captured, it's captured nicely on the video, but the sound in the room, of course, is always very different experience than what's coming through the, the, the microphones and through your computer speakers or whatever. But Daniel was in a place and it really moved him. And he, we literally had to stop filming because he, 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 he was brought to tears. <laughs> you know, I thought maybe because I was out of tune or something, but no, he, <laughs> it's a really sweet moment, but that's the Daniel's the, uh, he's that kind of guy. Music really moves him. And I really appreciate that about him. You know, it was very sweet, but I'll have to, I missed that. I'll have to remember the guy's name that you were saying recorded a video or something or, or a song based on uh based on that performance that he saw so could you post that question one more time for me uh, mark that yeah. we just i just want to catch the guy's name so i can t t check out his video uh it was uh john cordy okay john okay. cordy i'll remember that thanks christopher i appreciate that yeah, and sorry sorry dan oh <laughs> uh, yeah well that's yeah it was all the halos just when you get this thing yeah. This, this ambience, you know. inspiring you can just play some very simple things but it just kind of brings this magic to it mm -hmm. yeah way that's to good. go robert if that's what you're going for man you know. <laughs> thanks a lot <laughs> making dan cry <laughs> uh michael hordowich thank you uh andy you rule mm -hmm. abe i have too many amps and want to try to and record with a friedman amp would you would you trade <laughs> Uh, um, one of my high watt dr 103s for a be 100 baby hey nice send uh send me an email we can talk about it Ooh, yeah. enticing talk about it talk about it talk about I, it talk. I, that's it went further than i thought it was gonna go so yeah there you go well i kind of do want that amp <laughs> <laughs> i do want one the of things those, are so negotiable like, he I must really have known don't that need it but i i, yeah. I kind of want it right on man so things are the possibility. All right. This is exciting. Keep us posted. Yeah. <laughs> Peter says, Andy, your tone is just another world. Unreal. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, man. You're very kind. Work in progress, as they say, but I've got... It's in the hands. Well, in the hands. something. In the halo. Yeah, I have the halo. It doesn't sound... It, I don't sound like that when I put the halo. <laughs> Setting 1A, it's all in there, man. Come on. <laughs> uh, Dalton. Oh, Dalton. Boudreau again. Uh, Andy, your tone is mesmerizing. Oh, man, My so old sweet. teacher and bug Zach, Bud, Zach Early, introduced me to your music. He worked for Mojo Hand Effects doing NAM demos. Oh, nice. I remember the Mojo Hand Effects guys. 
I have, I have I have a large stack of petals over here, and there's some some of those in there. I've had one of their fuzzes back in the day. Anyway, thank you, Dalton. I'm, I'm appreciative of your compliments. Is it Mojo Hand? Uh... John Cusack, maybe. John Cusack. He, now? He, yeah, oh. now it is. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, okay, he he purchased it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we've gone through all the questions, maybe. Wait, no, there's another one. <laughs> one more. One more. Randy Wilcox. Hello, Randy. Randy, I catch all your shows at the Iridium and look forward to your return. Thank you, man. Uh, your demo of the Keeley modded BD, BD2 Blues Driver 2 for clean tones on the pedal show in 2005 is why I have one myself, and my Halo is now on order. Hey, all right. Well, it's a good combo, this Keeley, the Keeley stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, in, fa- in fact, I think that was the very first that pedal show dan and mick brought their recording oh, gear wow. my band was playing in london at a club called the borderline and the you know i'd i'd known daniel a little bit before hey mind if we come out and do a little interview great and they so they were just kind of getting their their feet wet and uh yeah i was honored to be the guinea pig i suppose mm. but yeah i don't remember what demo i did i was just probably going through sounds well that might have been when i did the bit of the uh, uh Dan cry that day too, so. I wish we could get all the guests to play like this. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but you have the perfect, you know, you have a setup there for it. I'm but, just, uh, I'm just, I, yeah, I'm more comfortable with a guitar in my hands, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that was the blues driver there, the Keeley modded. Yeah, sounds great. Um, yeah, man. But see. thanks all for the, the kind, the kind words out Thank there. You guys are very sweet. Thanks. Oh, we've got. Yeah, there's two more. There's more questions. Not the two more. All right, okay, Michael. No, no more super chats, people. We're we're gonna oh. probably wrap it up here. In okay. a second. I think the cat's eating my tuna. Michael, yeah. Hector, <laughs> Robert, you guys make an epic custom shop pedals. Will you ever offer the option of paying extra for a custom shop version of an existing pedal? I've really wanted to do something like that where you, people could upload their own images and then they could select a bunch of different knobs, and we could probably get it through our print shop. In, in short enough order where it would be a fun process. I think I'm just, I don't know, I'm waiting for the right thing to be able to offer that. But when you're when you're trying to work with an artist like Andy or you're, you know. <laughs> I'm I mean, getting a lot of blame here, yeah. Yeah, I'm blaming it on you. <laughs> when you got when you got something that sounds so good, you know, <laughs> worrying about custom pedals or custom graphics is not high on the list. So right, this is more I, inspiring. I, I think I'm getting ready to see Michael. Uh, he's going to come by and visit the shop. He's from out of town and he's going to come by with his family and visit our, our shop. Well, I'd encourage anybody that's traveling through I-40 and I-35 to stop by Keeley Electronics and I'll give you a tour. Man, that's a, um, a very kind but, offer. But yeah, I would like to do something custom like where you design your own pedals almost, you know, where you put the graphics on there, the color. And I think we could crank it out pretty reasonably without too much difficulty, but I'd have to get the web interface just right so that there yeah. wasn't a lot of questions and you know right, what I mean? Right, exactly. So if, if I could build, do that, it would be fun. Build your pedal mm. and be done. Right. Mm. Um, modern vintage again. All right. Dave, how much should new old stock GEL 34, 65, 50s, or 12, 12 AX7s go for these days? You know, I have no idea, to be honest. Um, I don't generally buy NOS tubes, uh, so I don't know. But eBay eBay probably is like, eBay seems to have a lot of, like, NOS tubes. So mm-hmm. eBay might be a good good source. Mm-hmm. 
You could spend a grand on a Telefunk in 12AX7 with ribbed plates. 1500 probably. You can just spend as much as you want. <laughs> yeah, and it's wow. definitely not worth it. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's like the final. I mean, one, I was just saying, one. maybe if you if you if you could get a set of GE sixty five fifties at somewhat of a reasonable price, whatever that might be, mm. um, it would be cool. Mm. But uh, I, I don't I don't necessarily believe in having NOS tubes because a lot of times you're buying something that you don't know what you're buying, and yeah. they turn out to be not good, or they turn out to be microphonic and you can't use them and you know there's got to be some guarantees here if you're going to spend money yeah. on it right you're going to spend a thousand dollars yeah it, yeah for, just forget the thousand dollar thing just that that is just utterly ridiculous you should never do that <laughs> <laughs> good good advice uh, straight tone talk here we go <laughs> straight up Sessions with Jeff. Uh, thank you. We need an Australian triple header tour of Andy Timmons, Andy Wood, and Greg. Hey, I would take that in a heartbeat, man. I love Andy and Greg a lot. These guys are Great both the monster, monster players. We've we, we've we spent time together. We've done some shows together. So that would be I would, that would be huge fun, man. I would not not turn that down. So make it so. Person with that question, you know. Uh, we're getting we song. Coming. We're getting song requests. Can we get a taste of Electric Gypsy, Andy? Sure, sure. riff from my first record awesome. a few moons ago yeah uh let's go with uh lindsey tims no question andy's the greatest have hey. a good night guys <laughs> thank awesome. you very nice well yeah you're not i'm not even the greatest in the room i've got my cat wrigley over here she's uh she's much greater than i am <laughs> <laughs> Uh, John Purser says, get Andy's new album that Josh produced, Outstanding. Uh, yeah, Josh nice. Smith, uh, great, great guitar buddy of mine. He produced my, my most recent record. It's called Electric Truth. It came out uh, April 1st. I can remember that date, of course. Um, yeah, no, it was, it was a, a fun record to do because basically I put everything in Josh's hands. He invited me to come record in the studio. I said, oh, well, let's do this. You know, I'm, I love my my band and doing my own thing, but it's it was really um, liberating for me to just kind of let go and say, okay, Josh, you pick the players, you produce. I'm just going to come in. I'll, I'll write some tunes. We wrote some tunes together, and uh, just see where it goes. And we did the the whole thing in like, two and a half days, right before NAM of 2020. And then we, I was going to come back in March to finish. Mm. Of course, nobody went anywhere in March of 2020, and I just finished it here at my studio, and then. Uh, Josh and his great engineer, he works with named Alan Hertz, mixed it. And I'm really proud of it. It's a really good sounding record. Uh, I'd, say, I'd say great sounding just because of the, the way the, the, just the organic tone of the drums and the bass and the guitar sounds nice. But uh, a lot of fun, man. Check it out a bit. A little funkier and bluesier than most of my usual stuff. So it was, it was a fun project. So I hope, I hope to work to, with more with Josh in the future. Really inspiring. Oh, my camera, my camera died. <laughs> oh, no. I think, I think that's... Uh, Maybe well, that's... except wait a minute. There, we'll, we'll, we'll do it with just yeah. the audio. Audio here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you know, what one. I can do though. No, my my camera overheats every now and then, so I think I can go. Well, I don't know if I can go into the settings or not. Anyway. Well, we got. We, you can just play it out if you want, because uh, we have a big super chat that says, "Andy, can you treat us to a little Bohemian Rhapsody?" Oh, nice. Well, what section? I mean, that's not. There's no little Bohemian Rhapsody. It's like. <laughs> drag we don't have any though well you know what i can get into the settings hold on one second i think okay. i can i can switch it to the um camera if i go to it's gonna be a, not as please there you go <laughs> hey, see look at all this all this mess you guys <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Oh, the, get this camera out of the way Wrigley, I'm upsetting you. Wish I could get her in the shot. 
Take three. Credits. Show nice, me nice request, but yeah, a little yeah, bit of yeah. <laughs> thank you. Show me that beast, really. Yeah, thank you me. very much. That was very generous of you. Um, if there's any, I think there's one more question, and then we'll go. Uh, them fuzzy monsters always love to get your shit together, and yeah, you want it. Uh, <laughs> screw it. Any fun tales on how they came together? Yeah, that well, the 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 tasty title, get your shit together. That was just an Aerosmith knockoff, basically. You know, I forget the riff at this point, but. Uh. The fun thing is that there's a little there's a little uh, audio before that. Would you please, please, please get your shit together from a movie called uh, Hollywood Shuffle by Robert Townsend? I'm not sure if anybody remembers that movie from the somewhere in the '80s, but the Wayans brothers are in it and Robert Townsend. And a really low budget movie, but it's hysterical, and uh, that's a clip from that movie that was inspired mm. that inspired the title. Yeah, that's all you got. Fantastic. Ooh, a lot of Danger Danger fans on here. I'm some. Yeah, that was cool. There you go. Yeah. Well, get away I, from I me past. Thank, I want to thank you, Andy, Robert. Yeah. Thanks for coming on, guys. Uh, thank thank you, you very much. What a stellar great. show. Thanks, Mark great and David. Great being on with you guys. Yeah, yeah really, really you. enjoyed it. Sorry very I screwed nice. it up in the beginning. Oh, uh, dude, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, my camera, camera, my, my, my camera got tired. That's all right. We, <laughs> my <laughs> camera bit. We adapt. We adapt. <laughs> That's right. Um, Guys, we uh, our next show is going to be with uh, Bill Landry on September 9th. Cool. Uh, and then we nice. also have Bjorn Jewell uh, from Mad Press Professor Petals. Oh, uh, oh, how wonderful. He's crazy. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, mad, mad Professor. <laughs> we'll find out. Happily titled. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You're scaring me, but <laughs> exactly. No. 
No, no, he's correct. Well, I, <laughs> I mean, I have had some crazy drinking damn oh. shows with oh, boy. yours. And oh, yeah? He's okay. just a wonderful guy. <laughs> okay. I like uh, baby. Well, we're going to have to break out the booze on the show. Yes. Now. Okay. Uh, he, he's, he's a really smart, very, very oh, yeah. impassioned guy. So Yeah. But, and I, I just love it. <laughs> awesome, man. Awesome. Well, you have to watch. Yeah. yeah. I, oh, yeah. I will. I will tune in. <laughs> yeah, he started. I think he started his own company because he's not with Matt oh, Perpetra yeah. anymore. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, so check that out, uh, guys. That'll be. I. I haven't confirmed with him on on when that date will be, but definitely September 9th with Bill Landry, and uh, and that's it. Check and out uh, Andy come. Timmons. What's that date? And more to come. More to All come. Right, definitely, yeah. we'll do another ass date. Get off. Soon. Get off our asses and book some more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No doubt. Andy, thank you so much yeah. for coming on and the amazing guitar work. Yeah, thank you. It was amazing. It's and, very happy uh, to be here, man. Thank you, guys. Rob, thank you again. Thank uh, you. All right, You're guys. Welcome. Everybody have a great weekend. Hang on, guys, while I hang up. And okay. uh, we'll take, take care, guys. Good night.